Circle C Farms is family owned and operated. They offer a complete line of top quality farming services. Circle C Farms is now offering grid sampling and precision fertilizer applications. They have the right equipment for your job and as always, they bring you tomorrow's technology to today's farming. So stop on by and visit with Steve and Ted about your needs or just give them a call at 620-872-3299. Circle C Farms is a proud sponsor of the Beaver Broadcasting Network. Pro Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. Feedyard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feedyard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to cheer on the beavers. If you're in the market for a newer used vehicle, check out JNR Auto Group with locations in Scott City, Oakley, and Colby. JNR Auto Group has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles in Scott City and both Oakley locations. Locally owned and operated, JNR Auto Group provide over 250 new and used vehicles in stock and ready to be delivered. Stop on in and check out JNR Auto Group LLC.com for all your vehicle needs. Chiropractic Wellness Centers of Southwest Kansas focuses on overall health for the entire body. Dr. James Yeager strives for the best possible health for his patients the natural way. Whether you're looking for back pain relief, through manual or computerized adjustments, or through therapy, to lose a few pounds, a healthier water alternative, or an aqua massage, come see Dr. Yeager and his trusted staff in Scott City or Garden City. To set up an appointment, call the offices or visit the website at ProHealthKS.com for more information. Scott City Eye Center has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations at our Scott City Optometry Office and specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and are committed to improving the quality of life of persons in the Scott City community through enhanced 
best vision. Give yourself the gift of clear vision. Schedule an appointment with Joshua J. Gooden, OD, today. Women at every stage of life want a healthcare experience uniquely theirs, where excellence meets elegance and healthcare is personalized just for you. Scott County Hospital and Scott City Clinics, skilled physicians and nurses will help your family prepare for the birth of your baby. The private, comfortable, secure rooms for labor, delivery, and postpartum care include jacuzzi tubs for pain management during labor. Call Scott City Clinic to set an appointment today. We put our heart in healthcare. Scott County Hospital is a highly trained team of motivated and compassionate professionals serving the needs of their community. Dr. Matthew Burns is a general surgeon whose specialty is caring for all patients with elective and emergency surgeries. Why travel for hours when you can be seen right here in Western Kansas? Dr. Burns is specially trained in colonoscopy, gallbladder and laparoscopic surgeries, hernia repair, wound care, and much more. Scott County Hospital, we put our heart in healthcare. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie... For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Chaplin at Chaplin Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Chaplin Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Chaplin Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Chaplin Real Estate a call or visit our website today. Go with the proven winner. I'm Michael Trout from State Farm in Scott City. When it comes to auto insurance, we score big with our policyholders. We score on competitive rates, on customer service, and on satisfaction and speedy claim handling. Let us quote your autos today and make you a part of the Trout State Farm team. Call or stop by Michael Trout State Farm and you can be assured of our personal best. Go with the winner, Michael Trout State Farm, Scott City. At Turner Sheet Metal, our main goal is to enhance the comfort of your home while making sure that our customers are 100% satisfied. Need your furnace checked for the winter? Call us. 
Need your air conditioner clean for the summer? Our Nate certified technicians are the guys for the job. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant authorized dealer in Scott City, can also help you save up to 40% on your heating and cooling costs with a Bryant Evolution system. Call for a free estimate and let us help keep your family comfortable and safe. Turner Sheet Metal, South Highway 83 in Scott City. It takes more than just the seed to raise a good crop. It takes the effort of a great team. It takes the same teamwork and dedication to be successful on the football field. Two receivers said it would be an option play, be handoff to the fullback, Golden. He finds nothing. Vogelmore Family Farms is proud to be part of Scott Community, where together we raise our most important crop of all, our kids. Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with a knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at WSBKS.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC, and as always, go be White's Food Liner is located at 1314 South Main Street in Scott City, Kansas. They are open daily from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Home delivery is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. just by calling 620-872-5854. They are a full-service grocery store offering a wide selection of varieties at affordable prices. Sign up today for their mobile app. Look for it in the App Play Store under White's Food Liner. Don't forget to visit today. Is your dog ungroomed and smelly? Then come on by the new and improved Wagon Wash, located at 501 Jackson Street in Scott City, Kansas. We added on a dog wash for your pet's hygienic needs. There are six different modes you can choose from. Shampoo, oatmeal conditioner, rinse, odor control, flea and tick, and blow dry. Our facilities are regularly cleaned and we have a vending machine full of treats for you and your pet. Follow us on Facebook at Wagon Wash Car Wash. dedicated team at Norder Supply is passionate about assisting our customers in achieving maximum net return per acre. That is how we define our success. Through unparalleled agronomic advice and best-in-class customer service, you can depend on us to do what is best for your operation. Ask them today about their spot-on service and how it can fill your needs. Norder Supply. Plain talk, exceptional results. Deeply rooted in the heart of Western Kansas, Bugglemore Family Farms is an efficient, team-driven, goal-oriented farming operation dedicated to hard work, moral integrity, community involvement, and environmental sustainability. Our diverse and knowledgeable team utilizes cutting-edge technology to incorporate practices that increase the productivity and profitability of the land. The land we farm is our livelihood and our future. For more than 65 years, Tatro has been the region's leader in intelligent, efficient, and budget-friendly plumbing and HVAC. Through pre-construction, intelligent construction services, commercial and industrial service, residential plumbing and HVAC service, the company's values of red, of respect, excellence, and determination can be seen through everything we do. Tatro commits to provide reliable services through team enrichment, training, and technology to be the contractor of choice. to success. It's all about teamwork. Whether it's the Scott City Beavers or your farming operation, it's teamwork that counts. You can count on the entire Scott Co-op team to make your operation successful. 
Beavers will be taking on the Cimarron Blue Jays here in the doubleheader battle count toward the, the uh, GWAC uh, standings here. Uh, both teams coming in here for Scott City are six and six. The girls matchup, Scott City at six and six on the year after a 58-29 loss to the Eagles and Lady Eagles uh, last Friday in the third place game at the Sterling Invitational. Also had a loss to Sterling in that uh, tournament, uh, 63 to 49 on the other side, the Cimarron Lady Blue Jays are 8-4 on the year. 0-1 in the league. Their loss in the league was to Goodland back three weeks ago. They finished third in the Poisington Winter Jam as they knocked off the Ellsworth Lady Bearcats 69-39. The boys game, Scott City looking to get to three-game win streak here. They've had two uh, in a row where they've won two games straight. They won over Smoky Valley 47-46 to get to 6-6 six and six on the year and eclipse their win total from last year. On the other side, Cimarron, they've won two in a row as well. Uh, they picked up a fifth place finish in the Hoisington Winter Jam take with a 56-51 win over Victoria last Saturday afternoon in Hoisington. Should have a fun doubleheader here tonight as these two teams are meeting up for the second and final time this year and both are in different substates. We'll step aside for a timeout of about three minutes and when we do return, we'll have pregame comments with the head coach, Amy Felker. Once again, back after this three minute timeout, this is Scott City Beaver basketball.
that kind of stuff. So we have uh, girls that can step up and be the leader and be that scorer any time. And um, it's just nice that we can um, rely on different people, not just one person. And so any given night is anybody's game. Once again, it is Coach Amy Felker here pregame tonight. Scott City facing Cimarron. And I know this has been probably one since uh, middle of December that you guys have had circled on the calendar for a while. Uh, a game that you let slip away in Cimarron back on the 14th of December. And you, now you've had a couple days to prepare for them. And what have you maybe seen different with uh, Blue Jays compared to the first time around? You know, the first time around, um, they were still a little out of shape. Uh, Miller was just, you know, coming back from injury, and so they're all full swing right now. Um, they're just getting a little bit more confidence as the season goes. Um, we're just going to have to um, work hard and contain a couple of their key players and just um, not let anybody else go off and make sure we have great defensive uh, rotations. And big game, a big stretch for you guys here coming up here with some big opportunities here. This is a league opener here. You get the Hayes Tuesday and you listen to next Friday in February coming up here. Where, is, where are some of the big things that you're looking to do down this uh, home stretch of the season? You know, we just got to um, keep improving and have confidence in ourselves and our team. You know, trust in each other that uh, we can make the big plays at the end of games. And we just want to compete every, every single night. Um, and we've, we've got a hard stretch coming up, um, not a lot of breaks to practice, we're just going to have to go, and um, I think the girls are going to be ready for that, and uh, we're just going to push and do the best we can. Should be a good one here tonight with Scott City and Cimarron, the league matchup. Uh, Coach Amy Felker joining me pregame. Coach, thanks for the time, and good luck to you guys. Thanks, Adam. That was Scott City, Lady Beaver Coach Amy Felker. Your pregame interview brought to you by Farm Bureau Financial Services with Hugh and Berta Benz in Scott City and Leota. More to come in your pregame show up break down the matchup. Bring you starters, keys to the game, and the tip off after this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. <laughs> Chiropractic Wellness Centers of Southwest Kansas focuses on overall health for the entire body. Dr. James Yeager strives for the best possible health for his patients the natural way. Whether you're looking for back pain relief, through manual or computerized adjustments, or through therapy, to lose a few pounds, a healthier water alternative, or an aqua massage, come see Dr. Yeager and his trusted staff in Scott City or Garden City. To set up an appointment, call the offices or visit the website at ProHealthKS.com for more information. Scott City Eye Center has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations at our Scott City Optometry Office and specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and are committed to improving the quality of life of persons in the Scott City community through enhanced vision. Give yourself the gift of clear vision. Schedule an appointment with Joshua J. Gooden, OD, today.
Women at every stage of life want a healthcare experience uniquely theirs, where excellence meets elegance and healthcare is personalized just for you. Scott County Hospital and Scott City Clinics, skilled physicians and nurses will help your family prepare for the birth of your baby. The private, comfortable, secure rooms for labor, delivery, and postpartum care include jacuzzi tubs for pain management during labor. Call Scott City Clinic to set an appointment today. We put our heart in healthcare. Scott County Hospital is a highly trained team of motivated and compassionate professionals serving the needs of their community. Dr. Matthew Burns is a general surgeon whose specialty is caring for all patients with elective and emergency surgeries. Why travel for hours when you can be seen right here in Western Kansas? Dr. Burns is specially trained in colonoscopy, gallbladder, and laparoscopic surgeries, hernia repair, wound care, and much more. Scott County Hospital, we put our heart in health care. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Shapland Real Estate. Game, they were led to Cimarron by Michaela Miller, 16. That was just her second and third game back. And Scott City had a double-double from Erica Felker in that game, 17 points, 13 uh, rebounds. Uh, Felker coming off a career-high 20 points on Friday last week against Hugoton. So in case you're wondering when that Hugoton game has been rescheduled for, that's going to be the 14th of February. So a Valentine's doubleheader on the road in Hugoton. And then it's going to be the Colby Lady, uh, the Eagles the following night up in Colby. And uh, so that's how that is uh, set up uh, there. But Scott City this year has had good production all across. It, uh, led by Erica Felker with 10, 12 points and four boards. Brooks Shrine at 10 and 8. And Amber at 10.7 and uh, two and a half rebounds a game. And of course, she missed a couple of games in the middle of this month. But back at it and came back at the Smoky Valley game. Scott City, opportunity to get a lead win here tonight. Get things going here. Get back above 500. At seven and six, and they started out four and zero and five and one. So they've lost uh, five of the last six ball games. But this has been a a rough stretch in the month of January. February is not going to be easy. We've got Hayes, who's really playing pretty good basketball. Holcomb, who's of course beat Scott City a couple weeks ago, and then got even in Colby Quinlan to round out the regular season. That's a pretty tough schedule. This GWAC is just pretty darn near tough. And pretty darn tough this year, I guess you could say here. Uh, Cimarron has Sublet and Lakin next week, and then Hugoden on the 8th of February, and Ulysses uh, the 11th. Uh, that's what they have in the next few games uh, coming up here. Cimarron, of course, coached by Austin Stevens in his first season. They are led so far by Michaela Miller, 16 points a game, and Emily Acton, of course, uh, averages 12 points a game. In fact, we'll go ahead and get to your starters momentarily, I guess you could say, uh, but uh, we will get to that here in a, a little bit. We will uh, go ahead and take this timeout. We'll bring your starters keys to the game and the opening tip. We'll do that after this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. When you want plain talk with exceptional results, count on Notre Dame.
620-872-0040. Scott City Eye Center supports all area school activities. All right, we're back here inside the Scott Community Event Center as we get your starting lineups here tonight. Presented by Security State Bank here in Scott City and Leona Free Bill Pay and Online Banking. Safe screen easy to use. Remember, FDIC. For the Cimarron Blue Jays, who are a sub-state finalist a year ago, lost to Hugoden and the Larned sub-state coach by Austin Stevens, who took over as head coach. He was an assistant from last year, assisted by Lisa Pink and Casey Clack. The Terran Jans getting the start tonight. She is a 5 pitcher reader, averaging 7.4 points, nearly four rebounds a game. Jada Wilson, a sophomore, 5'8", averages five points and nearly four rebounds a game. Also, Michaela Miller, a 6'1", junior, getting a lot of Division I offers. This cured already quite a bit. At 16.6 points and seven and a half rebounds a game. Caitlin Sande, she's a six foot junior at 10 and a half points and also 7.7 .7 rebounds. And rounding out the st uh, starting five, but generally active. She is committed to, it was, I believe was signed already to play at Bartlett Community College for basketball. Acted a 5'7 senior, 12 points and nearly four rebounds a game. Taryn Jansen, Gina Wilson, Emily Acton, Michaela Miller, and Caitlin Sande, the starting five for the Cimarron Lady Blue Jays. For the Scott City Lady Beavers, Amy Felker in her second season in Scott City. Assisted by Aaron Myers and Hunter Hope. It'll be Yellow Rump with the 6'1 senior. 4.4 4 points and nearly seven boards a game. Brooks Ryan has had a fair share. A couple of double-doubles this year, about three or four of them. A six-foot junior who went scoreless after back-to-back double-doubles in the Sterling Invitational last week in the game against Hibbenden last Friday. Brooks Stryman, the junior, averages 10 points and 8.4 rebounds a game. Amber Lott of the 5'5", senior, averages 10 points, 7 points, 10 half rebounds a game. Erica Felker, a sophomore, 5'5", averages 12 points, 6 points, and 4.3 rebounds. And Allie Patton, the 5'9", senior, 5.7 points, 3.6 rebounds a game. Ella Rump for Brooks Stryman. Amber Lott, Erica Felker, and Allie Patton, the starting five for the Scott City Lady Beavers. And once again, those are your starting lineups presented by Security State Bank. As we head over to our keys to the game here, presented by State Farm Major Michael Trout, we go for the winner. We'll come to the next time they still do. We'll get the policy holder. Keys tonight here for Scott City. I think one of the first big keys is going to be attack the inside. And Scott City needs to do a better job. That. Limit the touches. And actually, I don't know if you can limit the touches of Miller, but limit the role players, how much they touch it and score it, I guess you could say, because they were ones that stepped up big in the last game. Those are your keys to the game tonight, presented by State Farm Major Michael Trout. Games in the GWAC tonight, Colby and Holcomb, that's the counts toward the GWAC standings. You listen to the Heaton, and that's the first of two meetings this year, and it is Goodland taking on Lake and Bronx up in Goodland. Officials for tonight's contest. Yeah, Jake Eichner, also Jeremy Dietz, as well as Blake Arnberger. Those are your officials for tonight's contest. Scott City tonight will be in their home white uniforms with the navy blue numbers and letters and the lighter blue trim. Cimarron in those Columbia blue road uniforms. They have the navy blue numbers and letters with the white trim. Caitlin Sunday, Brooks trying to tip center, and Scott City wins the tap and we're underway. As Felker runs the point up top for Scott City, coming off her career high 20 points against Keegan in last Friday. And three triples, she had 20 of Scott City's 29 points. Nice cut, Ella Ruffer. Oh, lost the dribble. She was driving toward the left baseline to the left block for number number one. Had the right idea that time, just got a little excited with the dribble there. Cimarron's first possession, scoreless, 16 seconds in. Blue Jays with their first possession of the night with Michaela Miller running the point. The junior, Scott City in a 3-2. And here's an act of three right side. No rebound, tipped around. Patton saves it in to Brooks Stride for Scott City. Good, interesting matchup there. Scott City running their 3-2 and putting Ella Rumford at the point. At the top of that 3-2, mainly to guard Miller. Cimarron goes man to man here. Right side to Amber Lotta, gets a screen. Good behind the back, now she'll drive in. Needs help, double team. Flips up a tough shot as she's fouled. She draws the contact, bails herself out. And we'll head to the foul line with 7-10 to go first quarter. The 
foul on Cimarron, I believe is on Emily Acton. That is the right, her first. Ball game's first foul, Lotta, 79% free throw shooter on the air as a team, Scott City, 69%. Scott City gets the first point of the night, one to nothing, 50 seconds into the game. Amber Lotta, the senior, 5-5. Five, five. Couple of dribbles, fires this one up. Good as well, shoot it up. Scott City was swept last year in the series. Lost 52 to 30 at Semron. Lost an eight point game here in a seven point game in Substate Semis. And they lost 52 to 40, acting with it. Now underneath, backside to Sande, who puts it up and we're tied at two. Got behind the 3 2 zone of Scott City, 2 2 here with 6.50 to go first quarter. So Scott City and Semron all deadlocked here at two. 6.40 to go in the opening eight minutes. Here's Toker in the front court, goes left, gets a screen. She'll take it all the way. Bounce pass right in the hands of Acton. And that'll be turnover number two on Scott City. Nobody there for Lady Beavers. And Toker thought there would be. And now Acton, who's double teamed, bounce it right into the Sunday. Backside, bank shot, good left side chance. As right now, Semron has been moving, been doing a good job of moving Scott City out of position on defense. 4 2, 6.20 to go first quarter. Our first lead change, four in a row for the Lady Blue Jays. Right side to Felker, up top to Allie Patton. Now throws it in the strike, catches a power dribble, goes left, throws one up and banks it home. And we've got a whistle official timeout. That's 4-4, four, four. so Strine gets going there. Good job by Scott City feeding her with 6.05 to go first quarter. 4-4 four, four here, Scott City and Semron. Both teams starting off well from the floor. Scott City's hit their one shot. Semron's hit two of the first three. Scott City also two of two at the line. Two minutes in, we're tied at four. Left side to Michaela Miller. Uses up the dribble guarded by Felker. Lady Beavers now go to a 2-3 look. Now to Miller driving the right lane line. Fade away, the paint crawls off. Rebound Ella Rutherford for Scott City. And uh, Amber Lotta will push it left to right. 5.40 to go, first period of play. Lotta goes left to Patton. Holds it now left baseline to Ella Rutherford. Rutherford now uses up one dribble, flips it to Patton. Entry feed into Strine, catches it. Now goes right corner to Felker for a three on the way. That's going to be to the top of the backboard. Rebound, Strine, follow, no. And Michaela Miller grabs the board for Simron. Scott City with a couple opportunities there, but missed fire. Now driving coast to coast as Miller should be fouled and go to the line to shoot two here with 5.20 to go first quarter. Amber Lotta called with a foul, her first. That's Scott City's first foul. Two free throws for Michaela Miller. She's a 68% free throw shooter on the air. She leaves that one short, so remain tied at four. Five minutes, 20 seconds here in the first. Now the one here for the junior. Second free throw on the way. That is bouncing around and crawls home, and Cimarron goes back up by one at five to four. Blue Jays 61% as a team or 65%, excuse me, as a team coming in here to tonight. 5-12 to work first quarter, left side to Ella Rumford, bounce pass to the strike, catches it back out to Rumford for a three on the wing. Oh, that was halfway down, Ali Patton had the rebound, lost it, and then we're almost gonna travel, but it's kept alive there by Jansen, she throws it across, here's now driving in, Michaela Miller's step shot, steps through the lane, and scoop shot is good, 7-4, 4.50 to go first quarter, and wasn't a walk there, but it was close. 445 to work, Lotta pulls up, left side jumper, short rebound, Patton out high to Felker through a triple for the tie. Yes! Felker's 20th triple ties the game at seven. 434 to go first quarter, and Scott City gets this thing evened up at seven. Under four and a half to go in the opening quarter. And with it up top to go right side, Emily Acton. Back to Scott City in the zone, lob underneath the Sande, catches it, double team down out high. Here's an action three, no good. Rebound and tracked down in the corner by Gina Wilson. Then bounce past Jantz, and they're gonna throw it away. That'll be Simron's first turnover of the night. With 4.06 to go first quarter, as Coach Austin Stevens goes to the bench to bring in Melody Carter, the 5'8 senior. Replaces Taryn Jantz. They do have a handful of seniors on their team, do the Blue Jays. Well, they have about four seniors on their squad, about three of them play. 350 to work first quarter up top, Ella Rumford off the screen right side to Amber Lotta. Amber Lotta will drive down the paint. Throws one up and she is fouled and she'll get two free throws. 
second team foul on Simron with 3.47 to go. Here in the opening eight minutes to play, the foul on Melody Carter, her first. Amber Lotta back to the line to try to give Scott Sims the lead back. Lotta's first free throw good, and it's 8 7 Scott City. Second lead change of the night. 3.47 to go first quarter. In for the first time is J.C. Wilson, a 5'8 senior. She's coming off uh, surgery in the offseason, did not play volleyball, and did not play in the first meeting between the two, and she's getting more active. Good uh, jumper for Simron, and Lotta sinks the boat. She is 4 and 4 at the line, and Scott City back up by a couple. They've scored the last five of the ball game, 3.40 to go first quarter. The Lady Beavers yet to sub here in this first quarter. Here's Michaela Miller guarded. She'll drive in strong. Goes around the stride. No, good defense. But the backside board by Sonda. She hurt Scott City on the boards in the last meeting. 325 to go in the first quarter. Now foul line Sonda. Miller trying to cut. And it went right through her hands. Turnover number two on Simron. The Blue Jays have had back-to-back -back turnovers in their possessions, even though they had a missed shot there. 318 to go opening quarter. 9-7 Scott City lead with the ball. Belkert will bring it across, guarded by J.C. Wilson. Or correction, that's Jerry Wilson now to Ella Rufford out high. Look for a cutting lot as she'll drive down the middle, pull away, layup. It's going to be a foul on the floor, 13th foul on Simron. And Scott City doing a good job of attacking here and drawing early fouls here. The foul, I believe, will be on Miller. And Kayla Miller, her first, team's third. Belkert inbounded, 9-7, Scott City edge. In the stride, right block catches up. Pulls up, bank shot right side, half in and out of back home. Strine will score great inbound play. It's a 7-0 Scott City run. Under three to go first quarter at 11-7. Lady Beavers in the largest lead here in the early going. Miller with it left side, down to 250 to work first quarter. Miller up top, 2-3 zone by Scott City. She'll drive in, fade away in the paint. Wide left, rebound Wilson goes up and she's fouled. That's J.C. Wilson. She'll get two free throws here. Sermon with three offensive boards already in this first quarter. They out rebounded Scott City five to three. Miller's or Scott City has done a good job of contesting Miller's shots. Ella Rumford's first foul, second Scott City foul, free throw for Wilson is good. She comes in at 57% and breaks the 7-0 run. So Scott City run 11 to 8, 243 to go in the first quarter. J.C. Wilson, a senior, second free throw, short rebound, Felker for the Lady Beavers, her first quarter of the night. Three points, Scott City leading the ball, 235 to work first quarter. Lotta with the right side pass as Mallory Cup is in the game for the first time for the Lady Beavers, the 5-4 sophomore. Now Lotta with the right side from Rumford, gets the screen, goes left. Now they up top to Strine, she'll drive left with it to Mallory Cup towards the left corner, up top now to Amber Lotta. Holds it high right to Erica Felker. Simron staying man to man now to Strine. Catches at the foul line. Faces up, drives left line. Then pulls up, bank shot wide. And the rebound tipped in the hands of Caitlin Sande for Simron. 11 8. Approach two minutes to go first quarter layup. No rebound. JC Wilson, or Jada Wilson from JC got a whistle on the holding foul. They're going to call that on Simron. Says official Jake Eicher. They're going to get that on Jada Wilson, her first. Team's fourth. With 2.01 to go first quarter. Break for Scott City there with an 11-8 lead. Lotta in the front court to run for back to Lotta, right wing, just inside the three-point arc now. Up top of the screen for Felker. Strawaway triple is down. Felker with two threes and six points, and Scott City with a six-point lead here. They're on a 10-1 run over the last three minutes. 1.40 to go first quarter. Now Michaela Miller step back three. She's stuffed. They're going to call a tie-up. Possession arrow favors Scott City. Good job by Mallory Cup fighting around the screen. Stuffing Miller, who was getting ready to launch a three. And it'll still stay with the Lady J. Minute 30 to go first quarter. It's 14-8 Scott City. It's Jana Wilson, the sophomore, now to her sister JC. Into Miller, catches it left lane line. It goes up strong and lays it up for a fifth point. 14-10, 121 to go first quarter. Miller has five of the... 10 points here in the opening eight minutes. Minute 10 to go first period. Strine with it right on top of the key on the three point line. Left side now to Ella Rumford. Bounce pass to Felker left corner. Minute to go first quarter entry feed into Strine. Knocked loose, poked out high, but Scott City to retain possession of the ball. They have a 14 to 10 lead here, led by as many as six. Back away in his lotta. Jump stop hangs, floats one up. 
and it bounces in for two. She has her first field goal at six. 16 to 10, her points in the difference right now. 46 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. Simran with the ball, dribble between the legs. Miller drives in the paint, needs help. She'll put up a tough shot and can't get it to go. A rebound follow up, good for Melody Carter. Simran has done a good job on the offensive glass. That's her first two, 16 12. 30 seconds to go first quarter. That time Rumford was very fortunate she didn't get whistled for her second foul. Lady Beavers into Felker, catches it, goes up, bank shot too strong, gets her own rebound, kicks it out to Rumford. With 16 seconds to go first quarter, Lady Beavers reset with a four point lead. And now whistled as Rumford back to Lotta with seven seconds. With six off the screen, Felker five, right side pull up, jump up for two, might have been partially blocked, rebound tip, and Simron will get it in the Miller's hands, and that'll be the end of your first quarter. Scott City up by four as we end in the second at 16 to 12, and the Cimarron back in a minute. This is Lady Beaver Basketball. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Shapland Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Chaplin Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Chaplin Real Estate a call or visit our website today. Go with the proven winner. I'm Michael Trout from State Farm in Scott City. When it comes to auto insurance, we score big with our policyholders. We score on competitive rates, on customer service, and on satisfaction and speedy claim handling. Let us quote your autos today and make you a part of the Trout State Farm team. Call or stop by Michael Trout State Farm and you can be assured of our personal best. Go with the winner, Michael Trout State Farm, Scott City. Well, Scott City speed after one. And it'll be the Lady Beavers with the basketball to begin this second quarter. Both teams shooting at 5 of 11 in the first quarter. Scott City at two triples and three two-point field goals. They're also four of four from the line. Cimarron two of four at the line. Five of nine on twos, but did not hit a three. And now that's going to be a travel on Allie Patton. Scott City commits their third turnover. Both teams kept the turnovers down in the first quarter. Erica Felker and Amber Lotta leading the way with six points apiece. Both of them were big reason, or big uh, scores in the first meeting between the two teams. Both at 17, 11, Felker at 17, and Lott at 11. Lott underneath right block to Terrence Jansen, a whistle. We got a foul away from the ball, uh, at the block, I should say. That's gonna be on Scott City. That'll be the 13th foul of the half. They'll get it on Brooks Reiner first. Michaela Miller leading Simron with five points. Simron's been whistled for four fouls. Amber Lott, Ali Patton, Brooks Strine. Erica Felker and Ella Rumford on the floor. Now pulling up is Melody Carter. Her jumper in and out. Rebound to Patton. Grabs her second goal tonight. Cimarron out. Rebound in Scott City. Eight to five in that first quarter. Both teams empty handed. First trip for each in the second quarter. 16-12. Scott City with the four point lead. Cimarron now in a zone defense. Up top to Emberlotta. She'll fire a deep three. She'll be short on it. Rebound in the hands of Emily Acton. Had a good look at it. It was dead on, but left it a little short. She was a couple feet behind the three-point arc. First minute of the second period. Now to Carter, no look pass right side. Here's a three, and that is good. Tara Jantz hits her tip, triple the air, pulls Simron to within one. 16-15 with 6.50 to go first half. That's Simron's first three of the night. Left corner to Ali Patton, now to Brooks Drine. Back up top to Lotta. Turns down the three, she's quick and hard. She'll drive down the middle, left hand layup, no. Tipped around, Strine gets the rebound, and puts it up and scores it. She has six. 18-15 with 6.33 to go first half. And Strine was six. She had four against Zimron in the first meeting. In the paint to Emily Acton, double team. Now back left side to Jana Wilson, back top to Acton, back to Wilson left side. She'll try a triple and she will be short. That barely draws Iron Miller, saves in a play, but right to Cimarron. Taryn Jans to save the possession. Jana Wilson's only hit two threes this year, and Scott City forces a turnover, the third on Cimarron. 18-15, Scott City edge, two minutes into this eight minute second quarter. Patton now high left, Amber Lotto, Felker right side, holds it in the middle to Strine, catches it. Flips it left, back up top to Felker. Got to be patient now to Strine, right baseline. To 
Rough for now, Patton from 16, too strong on the shot, backside board to Taryn Jans. Here comes Cimarron racing back the other way, that's Patton's first shot attempt of the night. Bot almost poked away, and then Patton almost gets a steal, then the Lady Beavers do force the fourth turnover. Lotta pulls up mid-range, too strong. Rebound to Michaela Miller, her third board of the half. Both teams a little sluggish here in the second quarter. Both teams with two points apiece. Third straight Cimarron turnover. Fifth overall. Here's Amber Lotta, uncontested right-handed layup. She has eight. 20 to 15. They have four in a row to the Lady Beavers. 5-14 to go first half. Scott City with their second largest lead of the night at five. They've led by as many as six. And the paint deflected, picked up, and then Patton probably got away with a pushing foul. Let's say Cimarron turns the ball over for the fourth straight possession. Scott City subs in Mallory Cup for Amber Lotta. J.C. Wilson back in for Cimarron, replacing Melody Carter. So both teams only played one off the bench so far in this first half. Five minutes to go, second quarter. Scott City with a five-point lead. The ball at 20 to 15. Here's Ali Patton driving the right side out. Hyder her up, her bounce pass pick up. Works the left side to Felker. Erika holding the ball over her head. Now pull it past right side, ball fake. Rumford now cup, they'll work it around from left side. Patton with the deep two. Bounces off, rebound Ella Rumford. Back to way in, high up the glass, too strong. And the rebound to Cimarron on the run. Here's J.C. Wilson with it. Slows it up, four and a half to go first half. Scott said he had a couple good looks there, but could not add to their five point cushion. Dale Miller directing the offense here, 423. Fast moving first half, 40 to 15 for Scott City. Miller launches a three, short. Scott City's going to let that ball go out of bounds. It belonged to Cimarron, or to Scott City. That was Miller's first shot attempt of the second quarter. She has five of their 15 points. Not a lot of scoring here in the first 350 of the second quarter. So we're near the midway point. Patton with it up top to Felker. Five points, Scott City edge with the ball, 20 to 15. Felker with a dribble out high, 3-2 zone, left corner to Alley Patton, now to Ella Rumford. Bounce pass to Patton up top to Cup and working around to Felker. Scott City's trying to figure out this 3-2 zone. Patton with it right side out high right. And working around the left wing to Felker from Cup. Now in the stride catches it. Ella Rufford pumping. Now it's Patton. She'll launch a deep two. She'll bury that one finally. Drops home 22-15. Scott City with the largest lead of the night. It's a full timeout with 3.38 to go. Second quarter will come back in one minute. This is Beaver Basketball. Specialty Doctors, Stock County Hospital. We put our heart in health care. Cimarron burned a full timeout. Scott City scored the last six points in the ball game. They have the largest lead of the night at seven. Three and a half to go second quarter, 22-15. Out of the Blue Jay timeout, McKenna Miller with it left corner there. Scott City in a 2-3 zone. They started at a 3-2, then switched quickly to the 2-3. and Skipped it over right side to Emily Acton. Cut now in the foul line to Tara Jans. She has to go left to McKenna Miller who steps back. Good defense by Scott City as they reset as well. Approaching three to go first half. A screen for Miller drives in. Step, throw step, and floats one up for two in the paint. 22-17. Kind of a sidestep, I guess you could call it. Three minutes to go first half. That'll end about a four-minute drop for the Blue Jays as well. Ella Rump, oh, she lost the dribble, and it's stolen away. Scott City with a fourth turnover as Emily Acton brings it across. Bounce pass the right side. Here's J.C. Wilson driving in. Joe Fort went up, shot blocked that time by Stryan. The rebound, Allie Patton, who's double teamed, so finds outlet to Erica Felker. Good defense by Scott City. Lady Beavers up by five of the ball. Two and a half to go first half. Stryan saves the possession, now finds Felker for a three. That is short, rebound tipped and in the hands of Cimarron. Miller with the rebound there. 
Belker looking for a third three, unable to. Now Michaela Miller takes a strong rebound, going up and a foul. That'll be on Allie Patton at first. Cimarron has dominated the glass on Scott City in this first half, really on both sides. 2.19 to go second quarter. The foul on Patton at first. Scott City's third foul. The foul line. They're going to get Taryn Jantz there. She's 73% on the air and switches home to first. Cimarron now 3 of 5 line. They make it a 22 18 game. 219 to go first half. Out is Ella Ronford. And back in is Cup for Scott City. Also, Caitlin Sonday back in for Semron. Jantz now has seven. She has five in this quarter. Her and Miller have 14 of their 19 points. Here were 217 to go second quarter. 22-19, Cup right corner to Felker, back to Cup out high. Into Strine, catches at mid-post right. Now to Ambrolata looking to drive in. Needs help, but she traveled with it out high. That's Scott City's the turnover. Summer on the last four can tie it with the triple as we're just outside of two minutes to go first half. 22-19, your score. The Lady Beavers have been forced into a couple turnovers here consecutively. And the Lady Blue Jays looking to act to their 4 0 run. Miller's almost stripped out of there by Cup. Now she'll drive into a Miller. Tough shot gets it left side. She has nine. It's a 6 0 Cimarron run. They're doing then one, 147 to go first half. Miller with nine points. 22 21 now your score. Lotta goes right side to Mallory Cup. Cimarron switches off to a man defense. Up top now to Ali Patton right side to Amber Lotta. Minute 30 to go first half. Lotta trying to go give and go now. Deflected from Strine right to the hands of Erica Felker. Back to Lotta. In the foul line to Strine holds it. Back up top to Felker looking to drive in and miscommunication. And Scott City's going to turn it over for the third consecutive time. There's six of the half. And now Simron will have an opportunity to reclaim the lead here with minute 19 to go second quarter. 22-21, Scott City's lead is at one. They were led by seven at one point a couple of minutes ago. Two and a half minute drop for the Lady Beavers. Now at the foul line, here's Jantz driving against Strong. Stuffed by Strine and goes right in her hands for the rebound and then lost, picked up by Cimarron going up. Stuffed by Patton by Sunday, shot attempt. And the rebound to Scott City Strine again. 50 seconds to go first half, Lady Beavers. Up by one with the ball at 22-21. Strine holds it now to Patton go left side to Erica Felker. Gets a screen. They're going to call a moving screen on Patton. That'll be her second. And Scott City has turned the ball over six consecutive times. Runford in for Patton here. Patton checks out. 15th foul on Scott City. Simron is yet to foul in the second quarter. And they have another chance to retake the lead. Final 40 seconds half. Lady Beavers have been pulled from the floor. Well, they have not attempted a shot in three minutes because they've turned the ball over five consecutive times. Now to Sonday Miller and a whistle, and we've got a three-second lane violation on Simron. That's their seventh turnover last. Lady Beavers hanging on to one point lead the ball. 28 seconds to go in the second quarter. See if they go for the final shot of this half. Scott City has success when Simron was in the zone. They haven't had much success in man-to-man. -man. Bounce pass. Upside to Felker at 15 to work first half. Needs help, bounce passes to Ella Rumford with 10. Rumford holds it. Now we'll skip it over right side to Cup with seven. Oh, tried to get into Strine, but stolen away by Miller right out high. Lead pass down the floor. Wilson layup good. That's J.C. Wilson right at the end of the first half and an 8-0 run for Simron off of seven Scott City turnovers in a row to take a 23-22 halftime lead. We'll come back in three minutes for your halftime show. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Turner Sheet Metal, our main goal is to enhance the comfort of your home while making sure that our customers are 100% satisfied. Need your furnace checked for the winter? Call us. Need your air conditioner cleaned for the summer? Our Nate certified technicians are the guys for the job. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant authorized dealer in Scott City, can also help you save up to 40% on your heating and cooling costs with a Bryant Evolution system. Call for a free estimate and let us help keep your family comfortable and safe. Turner Sheet Metal, South Highway 83 in Scott City. It takes more than just the seed to raise a good crop. It takes the effort of a great team. It 
takes the same teamwork and dedication to be successful on the football field. Two receivers said it'll be an option play, be handoff to the fullback, Golden. He finds nothing. Vogelmore Family Farms is proud to be part of Scott Community, where together we raise our most important crop of all, our kids. Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with the knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at wsbks.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC, and as always, go be White's Food Liner is located at 1314 South Main Street in Scott City, Kansas. They are open daily from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Home delivery is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. just by calling 620-872-5854. They are a full-service grocery store offering a wide selection of varieties at affordable prices. Sign up today for their mobile app. Look for it in the App Play Store under White's Food Liner. Don't forget to visit today. Is your dog ungroomed and smelly? Then come on by the new and improved Wagon Wash, located at 501 Jackson Street in Scott City, Kansas. We added on a dog wash for your pet's hygienic needs. There are six different modes you can choose from. Shampoo, oatmeal conditioner, rinse, odor control, flea and tick, and blow dry. Our facilities are regularly cleaned and we have a vending machine full of treats for you and your pet. Follow us on Facebook at Wagon Wash Car Wash. The dedicated team at Norder Supply is passionate about assisting our customers in achieving maximum net return per acre. That is how we define our success. Through unparalleled agronomic advice and best-in-class customer service, you can depend on us to do what is best for your operation. Ask them today about their spot-on service and how it can fill your needs. Norder Supply. Plain talk. Exceptional results. Deeply rooted in the heart of Western Kansas, Bugamore Family Farms is an efficient, team-driven, goal-oriented farming operation dedicated to hard work, moral integrity, community involvement, and environmental sustainability. Our diverse and knowledgeable team utilizes cutting-edge technology to incorporate practices that increase the productivity and profitability of the land. The land we farm is our livelihood and our future. For more than 65 years, Tatro has... That's their only lead of the second quarter is right there, 23-22. Back here at the Scott Community Event Center, Adam Cadavy with you here as it is the first game of our doubleheader. Scott City led by seven with 3.38 to go second quarter. Cimarron called that timeout, and then they switched to a man, and Scott City had issues with that defense after that. Did not do much after that to the Lady Beavers. They committed several turnovers. Cimarron took advantage and scored the final eight points of the half to go up by one at intermission. First half scoring led, leading the way that is for Cimarron. Michaela Miller had nine. Seven for Taryn Jantz. Also three for J.C. Wilson who had the go-ahead basket right at the end of the first half. Also two each for Melody Carter and Caitlin Sande. One for... Uh, that's it. Uh, that's the scoring direction in the first half there for Cimarron. The Blue Jays had four fouls, seven turnovers. They also had four assists and four steals. That is nine defensive rebounds, six offensive boards for total, 15 rebounds in eight. Also dominating the glass in the first half on Scott City, 15 to nine. First half scoring for Scott City. They were led. Amber Lotta had eight. Erica Felker, Brooks Stein with six. And Ali Patton, too, that's the scoring in the first half. As Cimarron outscored Scott City 11 to 6 in the second quarter. Lady Beavers had five fouls, they had nine turnovers and three steals, nine total rebounds, seven on the defense. And actually, they had 11 rebounds, seven defense, but there's four offenses. 11 total rebounds, but still, they trail that department by four. They trail by one on the scoreboard at the break. 15 11 to score. We'll take another timeout, come back with some more first half stats. Get you set up for the second half of play. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. The region's leader in intelligent, efficient, and budget-friendly plumbing and HVAC. Through pre-construction, intelligent construction services, commercial and industrial service, 
residential plumbing and HVAC service. The company's values of red, of respect, excellence, and determination can be seen through everything we do. Tatro commits to provide reliable services through team enrichment, training, and technology to be the contractor of choice. At American Implement, we know that our farmers and ranchers are getting up and going to work every morning to provide food, fuel, and fiber for the world. And even though time and technology keeps us constantly changing, one thing will always remain the same. We promise that we'll continue working right beside you. We appreciate all that you do for our country and our communities. From all of us at American Implement, thank you. And may God bless the American farmer and rancher. Circle C Farms is family owned and operated. They offer a complete line of top quality farming services. Circle C Farms is now offering grid sampling and precision fertilizer applications. They have the right equipment for your job and as always, they bring you tomorrow's technology to today's farming. So stop on by and visit with Steve and Ted about your needs or just give them a call at 620. Scott City was 8 of 21 for 38 percent. Both teams were 5 of 11, by the way, from the field after the first quarter. Lady Beavers are 2 of 6 from behind the three point arc, 6 of 15 on twos, and 4 of 4 at the line. Did not attempt to free throw in the second quarter. Well, Cimarron didn't even foul in the second quarter. Scott City were the only one in foul trouble. They have Allie Patton with two fouls. Cimarron did not commit a foul, as I mentioned, in the second quarter. Up next for Scott City, they have two in a row on the road. They'll go to Hayes High on Tuesday in the month 1st of February to take on the Indians. And then we'll go to Ulysses next Friday. Meanwhile, uh, Semron on Tuesday night, they'll host an old friend uh, from the High Plains League, the Sublette Larks. It'll be High Plains week for them, I guess you could say, next week. And Lakin comes to Semron next Friday night. Semron's basketball to begin the third eight minutes of play with Michaela Miller. Jace, Jana Wilson, that is. Also, Emily Acton, Taryn Jance out there for them. Uh, once again, Jance, Wilson, Acton, Miller, and Sunday for the Blue Jays. For the Beavers, it'll be Rumford, Brooks Dryan, Amber Lotta, Erica Felker, and Allie Patton. Scott State trying to snap a four game losing streak to Semron in the series. Last one in sub state semifinal play at their place in two, 2020. 50 to 31. Third quarter officially underway. Scott City opens back up at a 2 3 zone. It's worked for him pretty well. High dribble there for Jana Wilson, not quite a double dribble. But now to Michaela Miller. Scott City's done a good job of making her 
have to hit some tough shots. Now they'll skip it right side to Emily Axton. She's been scoreless. To Jaina Wilson, now to Miller. She is double teamed immediately. He drives in back up top to Acton. Back to Miller at the foul line, left wing. Now three on the way is too strong. Rebound, Brooke Strine, that was put up by Taryn Jan. She has Cimarron's only three. Strine with five boards here tonight. Lady Beavers looking to retake the lead. They have been scoreless the last four minutes of game time. 45 seconds into the second half, 23-22 Cimarron leads. The Blue Jays dropped out of the rankings here in the past week. They've been ranked all season long and left side here into Erica Felker gives it to Strine at the foul line. Jumper off to left and the rebound to Jana Wilson in the corner. And then she stepped out of bounds. You gotta give credit to Erica Felker forcing that turnover. She guarded her tightly against the side. And that's just high IQ basketball right there. Inbound in, it's stolen away. The length of Michaela Miller got around there and then she's gonna be called for a double dribble. So the teams will trade turnovers here with 6.54 to go third quarter. It is tough to pass around Michaela Miller. Yes, she's 6'1 point guard, but her length, her wingspan is just pretty difficult to work around. Up top now to Allie Patton. Scott City to another crack at it to take their first lead of the second half. Simron goes man to man, Strine with it. Now left side back to Lotta. Lotta with it. Holds it, now screen up top, and now poked away from Felker, and she hits the deck, has it, saves the possession, now to Strine. She'll drive in, pull up over Miller, and bounces in for two. Strine with eight, 24-23, 6.25 to go third quarter, and Scott City back on top by one, our fourth lead change of the night. 6.18 to go third quarter, Michaela Miller with a dribble, skips it over right side to Jana Wilson, Back up top, it goes to Taryn Jantz. So working left side, acting three, too strong. Rebound, Miller houses for the rebound, her fifth of the night, and they'll reset. 6.03 to go third quarter. And the paint, here's Acton, jumper, right on, in and out of back home for her first two. 25-24, 5.56 to go third quarter. And Scott City has given up way too many second chance opportunities tonight. That's her seventh offensive board of the night for Cimarron, and they're back up by one. 5.45 to go third quarter. Up top to Patton, left side to Felker. Gets a screen, now goes around the perimeter, almost walked with it up top. Ella Rumford holds it. Now left side to Allie Patton, catches. Left side, here's Felker looking to drive around. She'll go right lane line and will lay it up at the foul on the floor. That'll be the first foul on Semron since the first quarter. They'll get Michaela Miller with her second. First foul either side this third quarter. Mallory Cup in for Amber Lotta here. The 5.30 to go, third stanza. 25-24, Cimarron up by one, Scott City's ball. Felker inbounds it in, Brick Strine right corner. She has a lone basket for the Beavers this half. Now Felker right corner three, the rainbow shot hits the top of the backboard, deflected into Strine's hand, the whistle, then she's gonna be called for a walk, and Scott City turns the ball over for the 11th time. Felker has not scored since the first quarter, as they have, Cimarron has really contained her pretty well, but. Uh, eight points each for Strine and Lotta to lead Lady Beavers. Driving in, a tough shot, out of control. No for Chance, but the follow-up for Sande. And Semron cleaning up the offensive glass here with five minutes to go third quarter. It's 27-24. Sande with all four of her points on second chance looks here. Here's a screen for Felker. Stops up top to Strine, drives in. Now left side, pull up left lane line. Banked it in for a 10th point, 27-26. 4.50 to go third quarter. Scott City ends the 4-0 Semron run. Miller with it, left side to Jantz, up top to Miller. She'll try a straightaway deep three and bury it. Her 12 point and her 18th triple gives Simron a 30 to 26 lead with four and a half to go third quarter. That's the largest lead for the Blue Jays in the game at four. Up top to Ella Rumford, four and a half to go third quarter. Right side to Erica Felker, gets a screen. Stop now to Ella Rumford, right wing. Lob into Strine, right block, catches it. Now quickly double team Miller and now back to Patton who almost stripped it out of there. Up top to Felker, Scott City resets. Middle of the third quarter, Lady Beavers down four of the ball. Strine with it, one dribble, she'll go left side, poked away, picked up though by Ella Rumford, entry feeding to Strine, catches and now stripped by Miller in a turnover. Right out of Strine's hands, Miller will lean in and that's gonna be, they're gonna count it and a foul. Oh my, it looked like Mallory Cup beats Miller to the basket, but they'll say Miller got the and one, and it's 
With 3.54 to go third quarter, timeout on the floor taken by Scott City will take it as well. Third quarter, 3.54, it's Cimarron 32, Scott City 26. Back in a minute, this is Scott City Basketball. Pro Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. Run, run, and they have a six-point lead, and Michaela Miller, the 6-1 junior, has the last five. She has 14 for Cimarron as the Blue Jays with a 32-26 lead. 3.54 to go third quarter as the help defense by Miller. She got the steal, went all the way, and thought Cup might have been able to take the charge, but they give the Mallory Cup the fouler first. Miller free throw, bounces off to the right. She's 68% on the air, one of three, and Patton secures the board for Scott City as the Lady Beavers need to end this 9-1 run here. They're down here. Amber Lotta drives strong to the basket for a 10 point, 32-28, 3.40 to go third quarter. And maybe that's what Scott City needs to do is get a little bit more aggressive here. Miller, on the other hand, is doing that, and she draws a holding foul on Semra, on Scott City. Second team foul of the half. Erica Felker's first foul, Scott City's second foul. 3.34 to go, third stands, a 32-28 Blue Jay lead with the ball. Jana Wilson inbound it, just gets it in to avoid the five count. Melody Carter trying to drive in, now right side out to J.C. Wilson. Pump, or jump stop too strong on the bank shot, and then she got her own rebound in the middle of three Lady Beavers. That's gotta be frustrating there for Coach Felker. 3.20 to go, third quarter. Everybody missed time to jump there, but Wilson ended up with it, and they can reset up by four. But Semron, really the difference in this ballgame is second-chance opportunities. They've out-rebounded Scott City 19-14 in this game unofficially as we approach three minutes to go third quarter. It's a 9-6 run for Semron in this third quarter. They lead by four. And they're being patient with the ball. Jana Wilson from 17 in and out. Rebound, Carter goes up, and she is fouled, and another opportunity for the Blue Jays to score as they'll go to line to shoot two. That time Carter had good position on Rumford to commence the, they're not gonna get Rumford with the foul, nope. Here with 2.51 to go third quarter. Free throw is good for Carter. She's a 78% free throw shooter, 33-28. 2.51 to go third quarter. They had, okay, they did get it on Rumford, Ella Rumford's second, team's third of the half. Carter with three points. 5'8 senior comes off the bench, her second free throw on the way, and that is good as well, and pushes Blue Jay lead back up to six. 34-28, 2.50 to go third quarter. It's been turnovers and offensive rebounding that has helped Cimarron to this lead here. Ella Rumford steps back, she hasn't attempted a three yet, but quickly guarded by Michaela Miller now. Amber Lotta right corner to Felker, entry feet into Strine, catches, goes up, tough shot, boy, she was hacked on the arm, they let it play through and out of bounds, they'll say it was blocked shot, and it'll still stay with the Beavers here with 2.32 to go third quarter. Scott City in jeopardy of losing their third straight game into Ella Rumford, now to screen for Felker, her shot is blocked, but rebound underneath Strine, she'll go up strong and stripped right out of her hands, going up in a steal. Scott City with her 13th turnover of the night, McKillie, Kayla Miller with it. Semron with a six point lead, driving in, a runner left side is short, rebound, another offensive board for the Blue Jays. And now a three up top by Carter, she knocks it down. And Semron with a nine point lead with 2.06 to go, third quarter, 37 28, another timeout for Scott City. And it's uh, 30, we'll keep it right here with 2.04 to go, third quarter, and Semron has opened up. A nine point lead at 
Scott City not boxing out, and that has given Cimarron ample opportunities here tonight. Basketball brought to you by Wendy's, White's Food Liner, Wheatland Electric, Western State Bank, Turner and Sheet Metal, Western Kansas Insurance, Volgamore Family Farms, True North Cafe, Original Grande, for Stevens Veterinary Services, State Farm Insurance, Spencer Pest Control, uh, Security State Bank, and Scott Pro. The Lady Beavers have been out banned on the glass tonight. 21 to 16, but they have given up 11 offensive boards and they have turned into a bulk of points tonight for Cimarron, who leads it by nine. Their largest of the game, they're on a 14 to six run in this third quarter. 37, 28, Scott City has not been as aggressive and they have had a hard time with Cimarron's man defense. Right side to Erica Felker. She's been scoreless since the first quarter. Her shot is blocked and the rebound goes to Cimarron in transition. Miller to J.C. Wilson, now they lose it. Turnover number 10 on the Blue Jays. Felker's not scored since the first quarter. Lotta with the ball, holds it. Minute 30 to go, third quarter. Needs help to avoid the five count, deflected up top to Erica Felker. Cimarron lead at nine, Scott City's ball. 37, 28, minute 20 to go, third quarter off the screen. Here's Amber Lotta, looking to drive. She finally will penetrate now to Felker right side. Scott City has not been the line since the first quarter. Now to Strine, catches it, will go up. Stuffed in it, bounces off the back iron. Cup gets the rebound, steps back, and then her shot is stuffed that time, and then she is pushed to the floor after the rebound. And then Coach Austin Stevens gets teed up. I don't think Coach Stevens saw that Simron pushed after the that Cup got stuffed on this follow-up shot. They get Jana Wilson with her second foul, second team foul. And then a technical foul uh, called on the Cimarron bench. So Scott City will get two free throws and the ball back. With 107 to go third quarter. Coach Stevens was out on the court quite a ways. I don't think he saw Wilson push cup, but Felker to line for two free throws and hits the first one. 37-29, 107 to go third quarter. Second free throw is good as well, 37-30. Scott City six of six from the line. They need to take advantage of this and maybe turn the tide around their favor. Final minute of this third quarter, and Cimarron will take a full timeout. We'll take it as well. 107, third quarter. It's Semron 37, Scott City 30. Back in a minute. This is Lady Beaver Basketball. Lady Feed Yard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and, in the end, the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us, and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feed Yard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to cheer on the Beavers. If you're in the market for a newer used vehicle, check out JNR Auto Group with locations in Scott City, Oakley, and Colby. JNR Auto Group has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles in Scott City and both Oakley locations. Locally owned and operated, JNR Auto Group provide over 250 new and used vehicles in stock and ready to be delivered. Stop on in and check out JNR Auto Group LLC.com for all your vehicle needs. Scott City's ball out of the time, out of Cimarron. Final minute of this third quarter into Strine. Up top to Allie Patton. Lady Beavers hitting two free throws on the technical free throws to pull to then 37 30. Cimarron has owned this third quarter and got a whistle on a moving screen away from the ball on the Lady Beavers. Foul will be charged to Mallory Cup, her second, team's fourth of the half. Cimarron has been whistled for three fouls this half as they will bring in Emily Acton for Michaela Miller, and then will be Taryn Jantz to replace Caitlin Sonday. Cimarron has gone two deep into the bench. Scott City just won. 37-3, Blue Jays with the lead in the ball. They have been on a tear. They really went on a 14-4 run in the middle of this third quarter that have opened this game up quite a bit. Right side to Taryn Jantz, almost stolen away, and it is by Amber Lotta. Turnover number 11. Lotta will go left side, she'll lay up, leaves it short, a lot of contact. And the last touched, I think, by Cimarron, or no correction, by Scott City will be Cimarron ball. 
40 seconds to work third quarter. The Beavers unable to take advantage of the turnover there and they trail by seven. Cimarron to walk it across with Jana Wilson. Final 30 seconds now. She loses the dribble and Cup steals it. She gets tripped. And that's Jana Wilson's third foul, team's fourth. With 28.8 to go third quarter. Lady Beavers need to get a shot of confidence here. They've kind of lost their confidence here in this month of January. It has been a brutal month. They're one in five in this month. And now it'll be Chloe Bertelson, a 5-4 junior to replace Jana Wilson. Patton inbound and into Lotta with 28 seconds to go third quarter. It's a seven point game, 37-30. Cimarron back into a 3-2 zone. Felker up top to Amber Lotta, now to Mallory Cup. Into Strine, catches it right elbow. Back to Lotta who spots up, quickly guarded. Wanted to take the three, and Cimarron sits back in a 2-3 zone. Left corner to Felker, 10 seconds into Strine, catches it, goes up, and left side good over Melody Carter. Strine with a dozen, 37-32 with four seconds, three seconds. Two seconds, Carter launches a deep three, wide left, and that's the end of your third quarter. Lady Beavers have cut a nine point deficit to five. 37-32 to be the ball when we come back to begin the fourth quarter. This is Beaver basketball. housing lender. Scott City's ball to begin the fourth quarter, trying to add to their 4 0 run toward the final minute of the third quarter. They trail 37-32 to the Blue Jays. Back here inside the Scott Community Event Center. Off the screen, here's Allie Patton up top, goes right side to Erica Felker. Now right side, here's Brooke Strine, goes up strong, and she's fouled by Caitlin Sande, her first. Semron foul number five of the second half with 7.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Two free throws for Strine who leads Scott City with 12, Amber Lotta with 10, and then Erica Felger with eight. Michaela Miller with 14 points tonight to lead Semron. Taryn Jantz has nine and Melody Carter off the bench with seven right at her season average. Strine hits the free throws, 37-33, 37-34. 7.45 left. It's a 6-0 Scott City run, and they're back to within one possession. Miller up top to Emily Acton. Swings it right side to Taryn Jantz. Now right side to Jada Wilson up top right wing to Taryn Jantz. Jantz back side deflected to Acton. Acton only has two points cutting left side and shot no, and whistle a foul on the floor for backside board by Sunday. Another offensive board for Cimarron. They have out-rebounded Scott City in the game 23-17. And the third foul charged to Allie Patton with 7.26 to go. Fifth team foul on the Lady Beavers this half. Up top, it'll be thrown in. Now in the paint to Taryn Jantz. Right side, now back to Jantz. Right elbow jumper, short rebound. Sunday goes up and is fouled by Patton. That is her fourth foul. Sunday has cleaned up a lot of offensive boards here tonight. She'll head to the line for two free throws where she's 59%. Patton with back-to-back -back fouls in this fourth quarter with 7.18 to go. She picked up two fouls here in eight seconds. And Sunday, 59% on the year. Cimarron now four of eight the line after Sunday misses that. Scott City is eight of eight tonight. So it remains a three-point game here with 7.18 to go. 37-34. Sunday with quite a few dribbles. Fires the second one up and she knocks it down. Her fifth point of the night. Ends the 6-0 Scott City run, 38-34, 7-18 to go. And Mallory cut back in here is Patton now sitting on the bench with 4,002 points. Give and go back to 
Amber Lotta, nice cut, stride to the basket, layup, good. Assist Lotta, 38-36, 7.03 to go. That'll work a lot for Scott City if they can keep fitting stride that way or whoever's cutting the basket. Miller up top to Taryn Jantz, right side. Here's Jada Wilson, cut off on the right baseline. Now right wing to Jantz. Seven, or 6.50 to go, left lane line up and under is the Acton. Now to Jantz, and she feeds it through. Lead pass, too high for Sunday, and out of bounds. And Turnover number 13 on the Blue Jays. Scott City with a chance to tie or take the lead with a triple here with 6.40 to go in the game at 38-36. Amber Lott, oh, she traveled with it up top and unforced error. Hesitation moves Scott City's 15th turnover and the unforced error gives the ball back to the Blue Jays as she had just picked up her dribble, clutched and then drugged that pivot foot. Back to the Blue Jays with the two-point lead. Michaela Miller, who has 14. Dribbles between the legs, now drives left side, takes it all the way to the rack of the layup, no. Sunday with a backside board and a putback. Somebody needs to keep blocking out 34, and she is killing Scott City on the boards, and it's 40 to 36 with 6.13 to go. Lady Beavers, oh, now they call an unforced error. Back-to-back -back turnovers up top by Scott City. This is how that first meeting went between the two teams back on the 14th of December. Although it was with Scott City with the lead when Cimarron went on their 20-0 run. Still a long ways to go, but the Lady Beavers not helping themselves with back-to-back -back unforced errors. Six minutes to go, 40-36. to 36. Miller with the ball, now hands it off to Ter Jana Wilson. She'll drive in strong, dishes it right side to Sunday. May have gotten away the walk. Acton for a three, no. And the rebound, and we got a whistle to push and foul on Cimarron. That's their sixth team foul to have. With 5.46 to go, they'll get the foul on Taryn Jantz, her first. Acton just has two points tonight. That came in the third quarter. She comes in averaging 12. Scott City down by four of the ball with 5.40 to go, 40 to 36. So they get their off motion offense going, and Cimarron back to man to man. Off the screen, here's Felker for straightaway three. It's blocked by Jana Wilson in the hands of Cimarron's Michaela Miller with her sixth board. Felker with only two points since the first quarter. Those are on the technical free throws in third. And now Wilson for two, no. Rebound, Amber Lotta had it saved into play. Nope, it wasn't as Mallory Cup hits the deck. And Simron with another crack at it. It's 5.19 to go. 40 to 36, Wilson to inbound it. Finds Miller to avoid the five count. Is quickly guarded by Felker. Looking to drive in on her. And then, ooh, they're gonna get Cup with the a foul, and it looked like Miller was elbowing. Armberger says, nope, that's a foul on Cup or third. Boy, that sure looked like an elbow by Miller, but not to the official. So Cup with three fouls, and that's the second, seventh team foul, excuse me, with 5.15 to go, and Michaela Miller's in line with their game high 14, or team high 14, and now 15. 41-36, 5.15 left. Cimarron has pushed the lead back up to five after Scott City had pulled it within two. Second free throw also good, and Miller with 16. She is four of six from the line, 42-36. She has 16, 5.08 to go. Scott City down six at 42-36. And now they're gonna get a whistle and a tie up, and that's gonna be a turnover. Three consecutive turnovers on for Scott City here in this fourth quarter. They now have 17 for the game, and. Their turnovers have come in bunches against Cimarron. Five minutes to go. Miller will bring it across with her team by 16. Her and Strine both have 16 apiece. Strine for Scott City, that is. And now in it goes to Taryn Jantz. Up top to Jana Wilson. Now to Emily Acton with 4.48 to go. Right side to Caitlin Sande. Now Jana Wilson takes the left side jumper. Bank too strong, but Cimarron with another offensive board. There's four Lady Blue Jays over left side, and they're gonna go whistle. A tie up for the rebound. That's going to finally belong to Scott City on the possession arrow. With the 4.37 to go, Lady Beavers don't need to panic, but they need to get some points. They cannot afford any more turnovers. They've turned it over three consecutive times here. It's 42 36. Left side to Mallory Cup, up top to Erica Felker. Now into Strine, left side to Cup. She'll tie a deep two. Rims that rebound, Ella Rumford. She'll go up, and she is fouled. There's a late call but it was the right one here with 4.18 to go and Scott sitting with an offensive board and Rumford with the third rebound of the night looking for her first two points of the game. Seventh team foul on Cimarron 
the second on Caitlin Sande. Two free throws for Rumford, the first is good. 42-37, 4.18 to go. Cimarron averages 54 points a game, Scott City at 46. Second, charity toss, too strong. Scott City now nine, a 10 from line, Michaela Miller with the rebound for the Blue Jays, who are up by five. We near the four minute mark of this ball game. Left corner wide open as Jans for three, too strong rebound, tipped around in the hands of Brooks Strine for Scott City Lady Beavers. Good job boxing out for that defensive board. Four minutes to go, five point game. Scott City an opportunity to get this to a one possession score. Felker right baseline, she'll drive it. Wrap around pass stolen by Miller and then she travels right back with it. Scott City's 18th turnover, 14th on Cimarron with 3.50 to go. Patton returns the lineup with the four fouls, replacing Mallory Cup. That's just one thing. you got to know where number 32 is. She has those long arms, and she can cover the four well. And those wraparound passes are anywhere inside. Tough passes are going to be tough. Scott City can inbound it in the backcourt. They do with 3.48 to go. It was not tipped off the inbounds by a Scott City player. Now, Pat knows she walks with it. And another unforced error. 19th Scott City turnover. In will be J.C. Wilson for Emily Acton for Cimarron. She'll retrieve the ball, inbound it from Michaela Miller. Five points, Cimarron leading the ball, 3.40 to go, 42-37. Wilson with the, that's Jana Wilson now to J.C. J.C. with it, now to Michaela Miller, guarded by Felker. Looking to drive in, steps back, 3.28 to go. Michaela with the dribble now, help defense. Scott City in a 3-2 look. Miller will take a strong bounce pass to Sande, who got behind the defense and scores it for a nine point. 44-37, 3.18 to go. And once Scott City had a chance to tie, they turn the ball over, they go down five, and now it's a turnaround. Timeout, Scott City to the full. We'll take it as well. 3.13 to go. 44-37, Cimarron up seven. We'll come back in a minute. This is Beaver Bass. Health Chiropractic Wellness Centers of Southwest Kansas focuses on overall health for the entire body. Dr. James Yeager strives for the best possible health for his patients the natural way. Whether you're looking for back pain relief, through manual or computerized adjustments, or through therapy, to lose a few pounds, a healthier water alternative, or an aqua massage, come see Dr. Yeager and his trusted staff in Scott City or Garden City. To set up an appointment, call the offices or visit you the website at prohealthks.com for opportunity more. Providers. The points off turnovers, second chance opportunities, really big against Scott City here tonight. They trail by seven as we approach three minutes to go. Amber Lotta drives in strong, can't get it to go, but Strine, who was fouled, and then we're gonna get a whistle, and we're gonna call a tie up. My goodness. That time, Wilson was all over the back of Patton, who had the rebound, after Strine missed the follow-up, and it's gonna belong to Cimarron. A tough break for the Beavers, down seven with three minutes to go and are down to two timeouts, 44-37. Right now, for Scott City, this is coming down to offensive boards for Cimarron and costly turnovers in this game at inopportune times. They had the lead for most of the first half. They've had a brief lead in the second half, and now Wilson, that's Jana Wilson, lost the dribble, now stolen away by Felker up top, 15th Cimarron turnover. Jump stop by Felker, goes around, shot stuffed underneath that time. Tough shot by Felker. Miller with the good defense. Lead pass down the floor. Here's Tara Jantz. Wraparound pass to J.C. Wilson. Now high to Miller with 2.20 to go. And Sande loses it right into the hands of Jantz. How high? She'll drive in. Flip it right side. Sande flat-footed shot. Short rebound. Strine working toward a double-double. 2.10 to go. Scott City down 7. They need to have a little bit more of a sense of urgency here. Down 44-39. There we go with Patton, lets the defender blow by for a fourth point, 44-39, two minutes to go. Scott City now needs a defensive stop, but you know Cimarron's gonna make him foul him here pretty soon here. Minute 50 to go. 
almost stolen away. Now here's J.C. Wilson driving left side to Michaela Miller. She'll try a three, and she will be too strong. But the rebound again to Sande, and then Cimarron loses it, but they get the possession. We have official timeouts for Cimarron. It's full with 1.39 to go, but Scott City unable to get an offensive or defensive board. We'll come back in 30 seconds, 44-39 Cimarron. We'll come back in 30 seconds with 1.39 to go. This is Beaver Basketball. Scott City Eye Center has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations at our Scott City Optometry Office and specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and are committed to improving the quality of life of persons in the Scott City community through enhanced vision. Give yourself the gift of clear vision. Schedule an appointment with Joshua J. Gooden, OD, today. Always get it for less. Scott City trails by five here, 44-39 with 139 left. Basketball tonight brought to you by Scott County Records, Scott County Hospital, also Scott County Fitness Center, Scott Cooperative Association, Scott Community Foundation, Scott City Pharmacy, Giftologist, Scott City Eye Center, Roden Bean Green Agency, Richards Financial Services, our brother's auto body mechanic, Precision Ag and Seed. Another offensive board for Cimarron. They have 17 offensive rebounds tonight out of their, tw uh, or out of their total here tonight. Uh, they have shot up by Miller. No, rebound Mallory Cup boxes out well, and the Lady Beavers with a chance to get down to a one-score game. Vital 90 seconds ago as Lotta uses up her dribble. Both teams with two timeouts remaining, and now it goes in to Cup. She'll drive in strong, loses the dribble and turnover. Another turnover for Scott City. Minute 15 to go. And now Simron with the five point lead in the ball can milk the clock a little bit more here with a minute eight to go. See, trying to, they need to start fouling possibly, but Lotta will say nope, I'll steal it instead. She'll take a strong right side. She'll get, try to go for layup and she hits her head hard on the floor and face first, but she's okay. She'll go to the line to shoot two with a minute to go. And Scott City can score points without any time running up the clock. They'll get Jana Wilson for her fourth foul with one minute to go. 44-39, that's the eighth team foul on Cimarron. Their eight, or 17th turnover of the night. As I was gonna mention there, Cimarron has 30 rebounds, Scott City has 22 tonight so far. Final minute of the regulation here, five point game, Lotta with 10 points. Only two here in the second half. Free throw good, 44-40. One minute exactly to go. Ella Rumford in, replacing uh, Mallory Cup. Also in is Emily Acton replacing Jana Wilson. Lotto gets one more free throw. She has 11. Just to make it a three point game with a minute to go. And that is good. Scott City has been good at the line. Coach Amy Felker burned one of her final two timeouts left. She has just one full left. One minute exactly to go. It's 41 40. We'll see if Scott City presses here. Team fouls, Cimarron has eight, Scott City has seven. If we do have a tie-up, possession arrow favors the Lady Beavers. Scott City led by Brooks Strine with 16 points and nine rebounds tonight. Amber Lotta has 12. And Erica Felker is eight for Cimarron, 16 for the 6-1 Division I bound to product, Michaela Miller. Also nine for Taryn Jansen, seven, or nine as well for Caitlin Sande. Right around her season average as well. The Lady Beavers down three now. They scored four quick points here in the last couple of minutes. It's pulled within 44-41. They have been good at the line here tonight. 11 of 12. They've not hit a three since the first quarter. Semron inbound it. They will get it into Michaela Miller. They have a trap on her. And then Felker fouls her for the second time in the team's eighth. Just 1.6 seconds tick off the clock. And Miller who is three of five of the line, has a front end of a one on one coming up here with 58.4. She's a clutch player. I don't know if he won her at the line with 58.4. Scott City had the great idea that time for a, that, but the free throw crawls in. Oh, it just snuck in there, 45-41, 58.4 to go. Second free throw for Miller. That is good as well. She is clutch, 46-41. Lead back up to five. Final minute of this game. Simran will pick up Scott City in half court. Lotta will bring it across. 
Now she'll drive left with the pass. She'll flip it over to Felker. Stops, pops a triple. It's a two-point game. Felker hits her second three, and Scott City burns her final timeout. 46-44 with 46.9 to go. We'll come back in 30 seconds. This is Beaver Basketball. That is at work from farms to construction sites to factories. Millions of people operate tractors and push equipment every day to help keep America strong and growing. And operating dump trucks or equipment with booms or other extensions. Watch out for overhead electrical lines. Make sure there's adequate clearance because coming in contact with those lines could result in a tragedy. For more safety information, visit WECI.net and click on the safety tab. An important safety message brought to you by Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life. Your touchstone energy cooperative. Scott City is back to within two of 46.
50 to 46. Cimarron with the four point lead here with 12.7 to go. And Lady Blue Jays may escape out of here with the win here, but Scott City have fought so hard to tie it. Cimarron broke the full court pressure, had the two on one numbers, got the layup with Acton with 29 seconds to go. Scott City missed a shot, they need to score quickly. Lotta with it, eight seconds, too much time running off the clock. Five seconds, here's the run for Children. We'll lay it up, no, rebound Cimarron, and they're gonna escape with the four point win. Time runs out. 50-46, Cimarron wins this one. They score four points in the final 29 seconds after Scott City worked so hard to tie it up. And the Blue Jays survive and get to nine and four on this year. For the first time this year, Scott City dips below 500. And they are now six, of, six and seven on the year. 50-46, your final. And we'll come back after this timeout. This is Scott City Lady Beaver basketball. Women at every stage of life want a healthcare experience uniquely theirs, where excellence meets elegance and healthcare is personalized just for you. Scott County Hospital and Scott City Clinic's skilled physicians and nurses will help your family prepare for the birth of your baby. The private, comfortable, secure rooms for labor, delivery, and postpartum care include jacuzzi tubs for pain management during labor. Call Scott City Clinic to set an appointment today. We put our heart in healthcare. Scott County Hospital is a highly trained team of motivated and compassionate professionals serving the needs of their community. Dr. Matthew Burns is a general surgeon whose specialty is caring for all patients with elective and emergency surgeries. Why travel for hours when you can be seen right here in Western Kansas? Dr. Burns is specially trained in colonoscopy, gallbladder, and laparoscopic surgeries, hernia repair, wound care, and much more. Scott County Hospital, we put our heart in healthcare. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Shapland Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agricultural property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Shapland Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Shapland Real Estate a call or visit our website today. Go with the proven winner. I'm Michael Trout from State Farm in Scott City. When it comes to auto insurance, we score big with our policyholders. We score on competitive rates, on customer service, and on satisfaction and speedy claim handling. Let us quote your autos today and make you a part of the Trout State Farm team. Call or stop by Michael Trout State Farm and you can be assured of our personal best. Go with the winner, Michael Trout State Farm, Scott City.
At Turner Sheet Metal, our main goal is to enhance the comfort of your home while making sure that our customers are 100% satisfied. Need your furnace checked for the winter? Call us. Need your air conditioner clean for the summer? Our Nate certified technicians are the guys for the job. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant authorized dealer in Scott City, can also help you save up to 40% on your heating and cooling costs with a Bryant Evolution system. Call for a free estimate and let us help keep your family comfortable and safe. Turner Sheet Metal, South Highway 83 in Scott City. It takes more than just the seed to raise a good crop. It takes the effort of a great team. It takes the same teamwork and dedication to be successful on the football field. Two receivers said it'd be an option play, be handoff to the fullback, Golden. He finds nothing. Vogelmore Family Farms is proud to be part of Scott Community, where together we raise our most important crop of all, our kids. Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with a knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at wsbks.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC. And as always, go Beaver! White's Food Liner is located at 1314 South Main Street in Scott City, Kansas. They are open daily from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Home delivery is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. just by calling 620-872-5854. They are a full-service grocery store offering a wide selection of varieties at affordable prices. Sign up today for their mobile app. Look for it in the App Play Store under White's Food Liner. Don't forget to visit today. Turnovers, 15 fouls, 7 steals, 22 rebounds, 12 defensive and 10 offensive in the 50 to 46 Blue Jay victory over Lady Beavers. We're now joined here with Coach Amy Felker here in the post game, and I think if there's two things to look at, it's kind of similar to the first game, although this was close at the end. Too many offensive rebounds for Cimarron and a string, too many strings of turnovers in succession. You know, uh, late in the game, in the third, fourth quarter, we gave them two, three shots uh, to look at the basket. You know, we got to do a better job of getting the backside, backside rebounds. Um, that really cost us big. They got too many easy, easy baskets. Um, turnovers. We just got to take care of the ball and make sure we do the little things right. Do you think maybe some of those unforced errors that's in crucial times is maybe overthinking things? You know. We, we probably were, we, you know, we were trying to get where we needed to go and we were just thinking it was going to be there and it wasn't there. You know, we just got to be under control and look at the look at the play and react to what they're giving us and make the right pass. He had a big game there for Brooke Strine. She only had four points in the first meeting, but she is close to a double-double, 16 points for her. And I thought that was big for her after a scoreless game uh, last week against Huguenin. And, she really felt comfortable scoring tonight, and Amber got to line a lot tonight, and that was big for her. You know, um, we've been really talking to Brooke about, you know, being strong and going to the basket and want to be a scorer, and uh, she, she's been working hard for us this last week, and, you know, she took it out to the court. She was attacking the basket. She wasn't going away from the basket. So, you know, she did a great job. Amber was really going hard to the basket and trying to get to the foul line. You know, when they're going to call that many fouls, we got to attack and get to the free throw line just like they were. I love the opportunities that you did present yourself here tonight, being down for most of all that fourth quarter. Coming back to tight, you guys just stayed strong that time. It wasn't like that the first time around, and it was a different ball game for you guys there tonight. You know, we, we stayed strong. We could have really um, just let, let loose and, you know, we, we just need to uh, play four quarters. Um, we need to play solid for four quarters and not uh, give up offensive rebounds and the turnovers. But, you know, there's a lot of positives coming out of this. You know, we've got some scores coming back that are starting to attack the basket. You know, we just got to get all four quarters together at the same night. Now, I know Michaela and Miller ended up with 20 points, but those I thought were very hard earned 20 points. I thought you, for, for most of the ball game, you guys, really did not give her an easy shot you know the first half uh she really controlled the first half i think you know we she was cut to the middle and we weren't we weren't stopping her you know however brooke was right there but she was getting the ball whenever she wanted to you know second half we put 
Erica on her and made Erica just follow her around. And the girls did a lot better job of knowing where she was at, not letting her get those easy shots. So, you know, defensively, Erica played a really solid game against her in the second half. He ended a brutal month of January here, and now you flip into February on Tuesday, and it's not going to be an easy task uh, against a much improving or a, and, and improving Hayes team. You know, Hayes, Hayes is tough. You know, they're young, um, but they're solid. Um, they play good defense. They have the offensive threats. And being on their home court, you know, we're going to have to uh, have our A game. We're going to have to be ready. Um, but these girls are ready to go, and they know what our job is now, four quarters. You bet. Amy Felker, coach, joining us here post game. Thanks again for the time here, coach, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Adam. All right, once again, coach Amy Felker stopped by here post game, recapping the Lady Beavers uh, game here tonight. Scott City falls on the girls' side to Cimarron 50 to 46. We'll step aside for this time, Matt. When we come back, we're going to hear uh, boys' pregame with head coach Brian Gentry. We'll come back after this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver basketball ungroomed and smelly then come on by the new and improved wagon wash located at 501 jackson street in scott city kansas we added on a dog wash for your pet's hygienic needs there are six different modes you can choose from shampoo oatmeal conditioner rinse odor control flea and tick and blow dry our facilities are regularly cleaned and we have a vending machine full of treats for you and your pet follow us on facebook at wagon wash car wash the dedicated team at Norder Supply is passionate about assisting our customers in achieving maximum net return per acre. That is how we define our success. Through unparalleled agronomic advice and best-in-class customer service, you can depend on us to do what is best for your operation. Ask them today about their spot-on service and how it can fill your needs. Norder Supply. Plain talk. Exceptional results. Deeply rooted in the heart of Western Kansas, Bugglemore Family Farms is an efficient, team-driven, goal-oriented farming operation dedicated to hard work, moral integrity, community involvement, and environmental sustainability. Our diverse and knowledgeable team utilizes cutting-edge technology to incorporate practices that increase the productivity and profitability of the land. The land we farm is our livelihood and our future. For more than 65 years, Tatro has been the region's leader in intelligent, efficient, and budget-friendly plumbing and HVAC. Through pre-construction, intelligent construction services, commercial and industrial service, residential plumbing and HVAC service, the company's values of red, of respect, excellence, and determination can be seen through everything we do. Tatro commits to provide reliable services through team enrichment, training, and technology to be the contractor of choice. Welcome back to the Sky Community Event Center. Adam Kadevi with the Aaron Mix 94.5. Your pregame interview brought to you by Farm Bureau Financial Services with you and Berta Benz in Scott City and Leota. I'm joined here by Coach uh, Brian Gentry here in the pregame. Coach, thanks for joining me here this evening. Uh, uh, it's been a week since you guys played. It feels like a long time ago. Just because of no school, a couple of days and whatnot. And 47-46 uh, nail-biting win over Smoky Valley a week ago. And there's a lot of good things that you guys did. That was a... Despite what their record shows, that was a pretty tough Smoky Valley team to face. Yeah, the record doesn't really indicate who they are, and I think early on in the season they were missing uh, several of their guys, uh, one or two here and there, and didn't have their full complement of players because, you know, they've got good size, they've got good athletes, they shoot the ball well. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a little bit closer than it needed to be due to the fact that we didn't really handle the pressure very well. They knocked down some shots late, but uh, we did hold on to it, and, uh, you move on, you learn from your you know, your mistakes and, and uh, hope that you can fix it if it comes up in the future. But it was uh, great to see what you guys were able to do there to survive the victory and do a lot of good things there in, the, in that uh, game, getting it into Gus Hawkins. Those are some tough plays for him to catch and just turn around and shoot. Yeah, a lot of his work starts way before the ball's even entered, uh, entered into him. So if he can do a you know his job and keep that guy on the high side those lob passes look dangerous but oftentimes they lead to pretty easy finishes for him when he gets his hands on it because he's already got the guy out of position credit to our guards for finding him credit to him for working and i thought we saw a lot of guys step up and, and do some things uh, whether that be carter or you know one of our guards but uh you know jackson you know had a heck of a week you know he had you know got extended minutes with ronnie being gone um, and in the last few days at practice you know he's 
he's really taking off. I, I think he's playing some just really good basketball right now. He's going at our guys. He's going at Gus and Carter and Ronnie, and uh, he's, he's playing really well. So uh, we look forward to seeing him continue to grow and, and get more opportunities to play down the stretch. Once again, it is Coach Brian Gentry here tonight pregame. Scott City faces Simron. This is a team you guys faced in the middle of December there and beat them pretty good. And they're now a 3-9 and nine team coming in here to tonight, and it's been a week for them as well. They finished, uh, I believe, in fifth place in their tournament there at Hoisington. Uh, you take a look at Simron. It all starts once again with Braxton Harrison. Yeah, he's a, he's a good athlete. He plays at his own pace, too. Uh, he never gets real sped up. He just um, always pretty, you know, under control. Uh, but very athletic. You play him at the post for the majority of the game. Uh, so when he catches down there, he's bouncy enough to, you know, jump up and, and shoot over the top. He's going to shoot it from deep, you know, when he catches it. So uh, just being aware of where he's at, limiting uh, his vision, just not letting him get easy looks. Uh, but then, you know, they've got to, they surround him with a lot of kids that are, you know, they're solid role players. You know, number 12, the left-handed kid shoots the ball really well. Uh, he's long. The number four gave us a hard time on the boards, especially in the first half when we played him. Uh, the point guard is, is really, really fast and, and, and can finish at the rim, so you've got to stay in front of him. And, and so that, you know, they, they've got a good, you know, they've got a good solid group of kids, but we're, we're just going to have to make it, you know, challenging on them, uh, not allow them to uh, get easy looks, so limit the easy looks. And then if they want to play their zone, you know, we, we've got three keys uh, to what we want to do with it, which is race it up the floor against it so it doesn't set up. We want to crash it because it's hard to rebound out of the zone, and we want to screen it. So uh, we're looking for those three things. If, if they're going to run their zone against us tonight, you know, those are the three keys for us. Um, on the other side of it, defensively, uh, we, we've got to get back and set up in our zone, you know, if that's where we're going to run. We've had three just really, really good practices, high-energy practices, very efficient. And uh, so I'm looking forward to, to watching our guys play tonight, really, you know, letting them get out there and go, and, and I know they're excited for it. Should be a fun one here tonight. Scott City and Simron and a start of uh, league play officially. Coach Brian Gentry joins us pregame. And Coach, thanks for joining us here and good luck to you guys. All right, thanks, Adam. That was Scott City Beaver Coach Brian Gentry. A pregame interview brought to you by Farm Bureau Financial Services with Ian Berta Benz and Scott City and Leota. More to come in your pregame show on the breakdown of the matchup. Also bring you starters, keys to the game, and the tip after this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. <laughs> At American Implement, we know that our farmers and ranchers are getting up and going to work every morning to provide food, fuel, and fiber for the world. And even though time and technology keeps us constantly changing, one thing will always remain the same. We promise that we'll continue working right beside you. We appreciate all that you do for our country and our communities. From all of us at American Implement, thank you. And may God bless the American farmer and rancher. Circle C Farms is family owned and operated. They offer a complete line of top quality farming services. Circle C Farms is now offering grid sampling and precision fertilizer applications. They have the right equipment for your job and as always, they bring you tomorrow's technology to today's farming. So stop on by and visit with Steve and Ted about your needs or just give them a call at 620-872-3299. Circle C Farms is a proud sponsor of the Beaver Broadcasting Network. Pro Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. 
Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. Broadcasting Network, and tonight it is the second game of our doubleheader coming up here featuring the Scott City Beavers and the Cimarron Blue Jays on the boys' side. And this is a second meeting, of course, this year. First one won by the Beavers back in middle of December, 63 to 40 over at Cimarron when Scott City hit a season high nine triples and that win over the Blue Jays. Could be a little different story here tonight, of course, but the Beavers do. Return back to the lineup. Uh, Ronnie Weathers and Alex Rodriguez, a couple of seniors back to the lineup. They were out last week uh, and will return here tonight. So we should hopefully see that should help the Beavers out a little bit more here tonight. A little bit more depth, of course, be without Dylan Metzger, but sounds like his recovery is coming along pretty well here. And hopefully we'll get to see him in the month of February. Scott City, six and six on the year. Both teams coming in. With two game win streaks, Cimarron at three and nine on the year. They're also winners of two in a row, so somebody's gonna have one of those, what you would call a winning streak after tonight, and hopefully it's the Scott City Beavers. Uh, the Beavers averaging 50 points a game, Cimarron at 41. Scott City got great performance from Gus Hawkins in their 47-46 nail biter over Smoky Valley last Friday in that fifth place game at the Sterling Invitational. A game where they had a 13 point lead early fourth quarter that was trimmed down to one and had to survive on a missed three by Smoky Valley late to get the one point win. And uh, Cimarron, they finished fifth place as well at the Boisington Cardinal Classic. They had a 21.10 rebound performance by the 6'1 senior Braxton Harrison who we'll hear a lot of tonight uh, the senior there for the Blue Jays and he's their leading scorer averaging 15 points and 10 rebounds a game he'll play at the post, he'll play it around the perimeter, he'll play all over the court there, Scott City will look to contain him and the rest of the Blue Jay crew here uh, tonight should be a fun matchup here Scott City Looking to get above 500 for the first time since 1-0 and also go 1-0 in league play here with the win here tonight. But uh, it'll be a good uh, double hit or second game here. Uh, they are getting ready to introduce the starting lineup, so why don't we do that as well? Starting lineups presented by Security State Bank in Scott City and Leonard Freeville Pay and Online Banking, safe, secure, and easy to use. Member FDIC. For the Blue Jays of Cimarron, they're coached by Chris Chilton in his first season, a longtime assistant over at Dodge City. Todd Hamilton and Tanner Seacrest, the assistants. Trace Copper, he's a 5'7 freshman who averages 5.7 points and two and a half assists per ball game. Luke Jansen, a senior at 6'3, 8.3 points, 6.8 rebounds a game. Also, Braxton Harrison, a 6'1 senior, 15.3 points, 10 and a half rebounds a game. And then also Lane Beery, who is a junior at 6'1", who averages 6.8 points and 1.4 rebounds a game. And then they will close out their lineup there with uh, Mendez, a 5'8", David Mendez, that is a 5'8", sophomore, 1.3 points and 2.1 rebounds a game. Trace Copper, Luke Jansen, Braxton Harrison, Lane Beery, and David Mendez. For the... Scott City Beavers coached by Brighton Gentry in a sixth season, assisted by Joey Meyer, Drew, Ka Drew Kite. Same lineup for the fourth consecutive game, Austin Tone. He is a six foot senior, averaging 6.1 points, 1.8 boards a game. Gus Hawkins, a 6'6 six, six sophomore, at 12.7 points, 6.6 6 rebounds a game. Lawson Bailey, a six foot junior, at 7.6 points, 3.7 rebounds a game. Also, Efren Tarango, the 6'2 senior, at 3.2 points, 1.4 rebounds a game, and Carter Gooden, the 6'4 senior, at 5 points and 5.7 rebounds a game. 
Austin Tone, Gus Hawkins, Lawson Bailey, Efren Trango, and Carter Good, the starting five tonight for the Scott City Beavers. Those are your Security State Bank starting lineups. Before we go to the keys to the game, presented by State Farm Major Michael Trout, get you caught up here on uh, the uh, Rocky Watt Invitational after today. Scott City uh, wrestling pretty well. They finished in 12th place after the opening day with 73 points. Goddard, 181 and a half. Pueblo East, 159 and Newton, 132. The top three. Scott City had three in the semifinals. Colin McDaniel, 126. Also, uh, at 145, they had uh, Zach Rubaugh and Kale Wheeler, 182. They all fell short in that semifinals, but to get to there is pretty good. They'll continue wrestling there tomorrow, beginning at 9 o'clock. Now we'll get to your keys to the game presented by State Farm agent Michael Trout. We're going to prove the winner when it comes to insurance. They score big with their policy holders. Keys tonight here for Scott City. They have to crash the boards hard. Cimarron kind of out-rebounded Scott City in the first meeting. And second key for Scott City, get it into the post players. Third key, drive in, kick out if you're the guards. Cimarron is in their own navy blue uniforms, the white numbers, letters, and light blue trim. Scott City in the home whites. It's Gus Hawkins, Luke Kent's the tip, and Cimarron wins the tap, and we're underway as they move from right to left. Trace Copper will start the point. Scott City settles in a 3-2 early, or a 1-2-2 look. Right side, here's a screen for Lane Berry. He had two threes in the last meeting between these two teams and six points. Cimarron escaped with a one-point win in here a year ago, 37-36. The only win in the series in the 17 games between the two schools. Second straight year that the teams have played two times. They did not play two times in a season until last year. Of course, teams in the GWAC. Here's a screen in the right corner. A three is good for Lane Beery. And Cermolin has an early 3-0 lead with 7.21 to go third quarter. The Beavers, first game in a week as well. You almost hate to see that as well when you've won two in a row. But... Both teams in that same predicament. Now Scott City finds Gus Hawkins underneath. He'll bank it up and score it on the left side. Scott City breaks the full court pressure. 3-2, first minute of the ball game. Cimarron with their second chance at or possession of the ball. Copper in the backcourt works his way in the front court. The pass to David Mendez. Mendez back up top to Copper. A 5'7 freshman. Now goes left for the pass to Lane Beery. Now Harrison drives in, but he's going to be pushed. And that'll be Scott City's first foul of the ball game at 6.45 to go first quarter. You don't want, really two, you don't really want to get going. That's Harrison and Barry from around the perimeter. They're both their top two leading three-point shooters. That's 37 of their 53 triples coming in. Screen for Trace Copper. He looks to drive in, now penetrate, but now a deep two on the way. That one's in and out for David Mendez. Carter Gooden grabs the board in transition, and that Scott City will get it knocked out with 6.33 to go first quarter. Gooden. Had four points in the first meeting, but had a slew of rebounds against the Blue Jays in their 63-40 win. Up top now to Efren Trango goes right side of the pass to Austin Tone. Trango with it now in the left corner to Lawson Bailey into Carter Gooden. He, boy, he got bumped. That's going to be last touch, I believe, by Simron. They'll give it to Scott City, but no foul. But it still stays Beaver ball with 6.22 to go first quarter. Scott City's ball down by one, looking to take the early lead. They'll lob it into Hawkins, he'll catch it, he'll go up and crawls off. Carter Good can reel it in into the hands of Trace Copper. Had the good look off the inbounds, and now Copper goes around two Beavers in the front court. 6-10 to work first quarter, two, or one point Cimarron lead with the ball. Mendez up top, he'll th float the foul line to Jansen, and then tried to get it to Trace Copper too strong a pass to Copper. First Blue Jay turnover comes with 6.03 to go, opening eight minutes of play. Another opportunity for the Beavers to get their first lead down one here at three to two. Tone running the point here. Have a, have got a whistle and they're gonna call a carrying violation on Tone out high and Scott City will turn the ball back over. 5.54 to go first quarter, 3-2, and Scott City's missed their opportunities to take the lead early on here. Missed shot and a turnover there. Trace Copper goes right corner with it to David Mendez. Mendez, one dribble now right corner to Lane Beery, hit the game's opening three, driving in. It's Harrison, flips one up over Gus Hawkins and knocks it home. 5-2, 5.35 to go first quarter. Harrison, who averages 15-10 a game, has his first two of the night. 
Of course, we've seen him as a quarterback and free safety wreak havoc on Scott City this year especially. 5.20 to work first quarter. With it is Austin Tone, loses the dribble at high, saved into play by Lawson Bailey. Somehow Carter Good retrieves it. Now up top to Bailey who will drive in. Jump stop of the paint, his floater up, good. Nice strong move by Bailey driving in, 5-4. 5.07 to go first quarter. Good job of penetrating by the Beavers, but they trail by one, three minutes into the game. Co Copper with it, still in the backcourt, finds Mendez in the front court right, entry feed into Jansen, posting up on good. His turnaround shot is good. Jansen first, 2-7-4, 4.50 to go first quarter. And both teams have answered back on baskets here. 7-4, Blue Jay lead, 4.44 to go first quarter. Tone uses up a dribble, now finds Effort Tranga right side to Lawson Bailey, quickly guarded by Jansen, otherwise he probably would have pulled the trigger on a triple. Tone with it. He'll drive left side, take it all the way to the rack. Trying to feed it back side, but he's gonna be called for the travel. Drug the pivot foot, says official Jeremy Dietz. Turnover number two on Scott City. They're down three, the 4.32 to go first quarter at 7-4. Down to 4.24 to work first quarter with it is Copper up top now to David Mendez, guarded by Trango. He almost poked away, and then Carter Gooden steps in front of the pass, intended for Copper, and Cimarron with their second turnover. 4-12 first quarter, 7-4 Blue Jay lead. I think Scott City may want to push the tempo a little bit. That would favor their pace. Now Trango pulls that mid-range jumper, leaves it short in to Harrison. He's going to race it across. He'll go coast to coast for the layup and crawls off, hits the basket. Standard rebound in the hands of Lawson Bailey. 3.54 to go first quarter. Now Scott City turns the ball over for the third time into Harrison. It'll be a foul before the shot. And Scott City commits foul number two as Harrison got the steal and Scott City's third or had the layup opportunity but foul before the shot. Foul on Austin Tone is first. And for the first time is Cade Moeller, a 5'10 junior, replaces David Mendez. Semron with a three point lead, Men, or off the inbounds, Beery's shot for two. 9-4 here is five points of the difference, 3.45 to go first quarter. And Semron has a five point lead here. Scott City sluggish to start. Right side to Austin Tone. Tone has it up top now to Bailey. Left side to Efren Trango, he'll try a three. He'll be short on the three as Lawson Bailey tracks down the board. And right corner three is good for Bailey. He has five, he has nine threes on the year. Nine, seven, 3.20 to go first quarter. And Scott City pulls back to within a couple. That ends a 4-0 simmer on run. Beavers back to within two as we approach three minutes to go first quarter. Left wing, Delane Beery guarded by Tone up top. Scott City switching up to man defense. Cade Moeller with it. Now skips it right side over to Lane Beery. Steps back, fires a triple. Too strong, rebound deflected, picked up by Gus Hawkins. Air ball shot there by Beery. 2.50 to go first quarter. Bailey looking to drive in. Jump stop, Hank shoots. Too strong, rebound. Got his own rebound somehow through the muck. He'll throw one up and score it off his own put. Our own rebound. He has seven of Scott City's nine points with 2.38 to go first quarter. And we're tied for the first time at nine. Bailey has seven of Scott City's nine points here in this first quarter. And he has both of Scott City's offensive boards. 2.25 to go first quarter. Jansen with it. He'll drive right side. Goes around a couple of Beavers. Throws one up. Thought he got fouled. <laughs> Rebound to Scott City. Bailey pulls up now to Tarango. Right side to Bailey for an open three for the lead. Yes! Bailey with eight in a row. And Scott City has a 12-9 lead. Actually, 10 in a row. With two minutes to go first quarter. Our first lead change, an 8-0 Scott City run to take a 12-9 lead. Two weeks ago, Bailey commented on our coaches show he's shooting just 7% from three, and an answer back three no for Braxton Harrison. Effort Trango now to Bailey who has the last 10. Pump fakes, bank shot, has the last 12. 14-9, 140 to go first quarter, and a 30-second simmer on timeout. Bailey has 12 in a row for Scott City. And it's a 14-9 Beaver lead with 100 seconds to go first quarter. As I mentioned, Bailey was commenting about his 7% shooting for three. Well, he's now south of, or north of 20% from downtown. Basketball tonight brought to you by Pokey Feeders, Platinum Age Insurance, Plain Jans, New Life Market, Norder Supply, Miller Veterinary Clinic, Midwest Mixer, Western Berry, Metzger Appraisals and Metzger Family Farms, McCarty Family Farms, Lone Tree Farms and Livestock, Jackson Legal Group, 
Jeff Beaver Advertising, JNR Trucking, JNR Car and Truck, HRC Feed Yards, Hey Mamie Farms, High Choice Feeders, and Harris Chiropractic and Acupunk. A 10 0 Scott City run, all by Lawson Bailey. He has 12, or has the last 12, in fact, for Scott City. They're up by five here with a minute 40 to go, first quarter at 14 9. Cimarron burning their first time out of the night. Trying to end this 10 0 Scott City run. Minute 35 to go, first quarter. Up top to Harrison. Lawson may be playing to that spark there to help the Beavers out here. Spark that the Beavers may need here. Moeller right side to Copper, guarded by. Jace Thomas enters the game for the first time. Now Copper dribbles it back out to Jansen, back up top to Copper. And Thomas the first sub for the Beavers here. Ronnie Weathers also in there for the first time. The 6'3 senior, his first action in two weeks. Here's a screen for Beer, but quickly guarded by Bailey. Final minute of this first quarter, Copper with it. Scott City playing good man-to-man -man defense. Copper drive in now to Harrison. Now pump bag, here's Berry driving in strong. A whistle foul on the floor with 59.9 to go first quarter Scott City's 13th foul of the half and the first on Lawson Bailey in will be Alec Whitman for the first time he'll replace Braxton Harrison 14-9 lead to five for Scott City 59.9 to go first period of play Simron inbound area throw basket and then stuffed by Thomas with the steal third Blue Jay turnover Scott City looking to add to their 10-0 run here 50 seconds to go first quarter. Tone with it at the point. Now at the top of the key between the rings to Lawson Bailey. He has 12 to Scott City's 14. Thomas with it back up top to Bailey. Pump fakes on the three. Drives in strong. Hang, shoots, leaves it short that time. Deflected. Bailey with his third offensive rebound of the quarter. And now to Thomas left corner and a whistle and an unforced error and a travel call. Fourth turnover on Scott City with 34.6 to go first quarter. I know Scott City has to be frustrated on the traveling violations. Really, last week they did not call that hardly at all in the Sterling Invitational. It kind of goes by territory, and it's just how the officials call it by territory. They call it more out in Western Kansas, and that's okay. Alec Whitman now right side ball deflected by Toma into the hands of Lane Beery. Now kicks it out right side to Moeller with 18 seconds. Left side to Copper, guarded by Bailey. Five points, Scott City lead. 15 seconds to work first quarter. Copper goes around two. His reverse layup is good. Nice, nifty move by the freshman for his first two, 14-11, seven seconds to go first quarter. That ends the 10-0, Scott's gonna run Bailey right side to Tone. Four seconds, he'll fire a deep three. He'll bury the three! Red as the first quarter horn sounds! 17-11, Beavers up by three after one. Back in a minute for the second quarter, this is Scott City basketball. Feedyard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feedyard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and our it's a 17-12 Scott City lead after one, and it is their basketball to begin the second quarter. Austin Tone hit the third three of the period for the Beavers. It is Lawson Bailey who has 12 points to lead Scott City. Cimarron had a pretty bounce attack, but it's Lane Berry leading them with five. They had a few others with, uh, three others with two points. Second period officially underway. Here's Tone driving in left side, Jace Thomas. He'll try a triple. He'll bury a triple, his first. Varsity triple of his career, 20 to 11, 7.45 to go first half. And Scott City now four of five from downtown this first half. And they have a nine point lead. They're on a 16-2 run over the last four minutes of game time. With it up top is Barry, bounce pass behind. Kane Mullers, he couldn't quite reel it in. Fourth Cimarron turnover. Cimarron was four of six on twos in that first quarter. 
But they, they were also five of nine from the field. Scott City was seven of 12, so both teams shot the ball fairly well. Bailey in the front court, first minute of the second quarter, but that was an unforced error. Bailey got across, stopped, and then Tone did not get it quite across the half court stripe, and he caught the ball. So he was getting across, and it's an over and back. Turnover number five on Scott City. 7.20 to go second quarter. Semron's ball down nine at 20 to 11. Scott City has played pretty good man-to-man -man defense here in this first half. Uh, with it is Harrison Hill drive left side. Goes up and is fouled by Gus Hawkins. That's his first. Team's fourth of the half. With 7.08 to go second quarter. Hawkins with a foul. And Semron has yet to foul. Harrison a 67% free throw shooter. These are the first free throws either side tonight. Cimarron 50% as a team, and that one crawls in 20 to 12. Now with 7.08 to go second quarter, Carter Gooden replacing Gus Hawkins. Gus Hawkins had the opening two points as he checks out, and it's Carter Gooden to replace him. Has not scored since then. Harrison sinks them both, the S4, 20 to 13. Opening minute of this second quarter. Cimarron three and nine overall, 0 and one in the league play, Scott City. First league game is good and has the save it into play. Throws it away almost and Thomas retrieves it and then he gets undercut and no foul. Turnover. Back to back Scott City turnovers. They let it play through there with 6.50 to go first half. Wide open is Beery for three. Good. He has two threes and eight points. 20 to 16. 6.45 to go first half. I'm, I don't know how that's not a foul to be honest and I'm not trying to complain but Cimarron has yet to be called for a foul here. Bailey now needs help, finds Ronnie Weathers. So Cimarron has trimmed a nine point deficit to four, up top to Tone here. He'll drive left side in the paint, hangs the paint, jumper short, rebound, Carter Gooden. He'll go up, shot a block. Golly, can you call a foul on Cimarron? My goodness, there's a couple of hacks there and they let it play through. Now driving in, there's a foul, but it's gonna be on the floor on Cimarron. They finally get whistled for one with 6.18 to go first half. The foul will be charged to Cade Moeller, his first. That is Cimarron's first foul. We get a timeout for Scott City. It's a 30-second timeout with 6.18 to go second quarter. Are letting it play underneath. 20 to 16 is your score. Scott City down, or up by four, excuse me. Basketball also brought to you tonight by Jackson Legal Group, JF Beaver Advertising, j and Trucking, j and Car and Truck, HRC Feed Yards, Amy Amy Farms, High Choice Feeders, Harris Chiropractic, and Extra Pumps. Also, Great Western Tire, Fro Electric, Fro Ag Service, Fro Heating and Cooling, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Neil Baker, First National Bank, also Fairly Companies, and Farm Bureau Financial Services at Hewn Berta Benz. A couple of turnovers have led to some points here for the Blue Jays in the second quarter. They've scored the last five of the ball game and have pulled to within 20 to 16 with 618 to go second quarter. Brian Gentry. Since in a little momentum going back to Cimarron's side, so he burned that 30-second timeout. Both teams have burned a 30-second timeout in this opening half. Weathers to trigger it in out of the timeout. Does so to Carter Gooden up top to Lawson Bailey off the screen. Here's Tone open for the right corner three. In and out, rebound. Carter Gooden with it, backs his way in, flips it up, hook shot short, rebound. Jace Thomas will get a whistle and a pushing foul underneath on Cimarron, their second team foul of the half. That's Braxton Harrison's first foul, team second. 6.07 to go, second quarter. Bailey that triggered in, does so. Carter Gooden pump fakes, goes up, scores it and one. Finally, a uh, basket for Gooden, his first points of the night. 22-16, 6.05 to go, first half. And the foul starting to even up all of a sudden. That's team foul number three on the Blue Jays. They get Alec. Whitman with his first foul as Luke Jansen returns the lineup replacing Whitman. Gooden a 50% free throw shooter. Scott City 62%. He can't get the free throw to go. Tipped around and that one's going to be last touch they'll say by Scott City. Except Beavers underneath didn't like it but Jake Eicher was pretty confident in his call. Gives it to the Blue Jays. 22-16 Scott City up six minutes to go first half. Trace Copper in the front court goes right with a pass to David Mendez. Mendez off the screen right side to Lane Beery. Entry feed in to Luke Jansen at the block. Bounce pass knocked away by Scott City with the steal. Good defense that time by Weathers with the help defense, forcing Cimarron into their fifth turnover spin move. Bailey almost carried it there. 540 to go first half. He has a dribble front court, now passes it right out high to Tone. Tone will drive in the paint, jumps up, hangs, shoot. Got it. He has five. That's a good move for Tone. 20. Two, or make that 24-16, 5-28 to go first half. Scott City lead pushed back up to eight. They've led by a 
As many as nine, early second quarter. Left elbow, Braxton Harrison now, he'll just step back and fire a three and hit it. Cimarron's third three, 24-19, 5.14 to go first half. That's his 20th triple. He's not afraid to launch it from anywhere despite being a 22% three-point shooter. And Scott City turns the ball over for the seventh time this half. Five minutes to go second quarter. And Cimarron hanging around here down just five with the basketball back. They have made a little run here, an eight to four run here over the last two minutes. Now Beery with it. Guarded by Thomas here with 4.45 to go second quarter. Goes left side of the pass to Copper. He'll fire a deep three. That one's off. Rebound Austin Tone. Hit the lip of the rim toward the right. Tone to push it across. In transition to Thomas. Oh, behind him. Had a good idea, but just behind him. And turnover number eight. Jackson Rumford enters for the first time, replacing Ronnie Weathers. We knew we'd see more of Jackson Rumford here. And he's in for the first time after a big tournament for a week he had last week. Four and a half to go second quarter, bringing it across will be Trace Copper, the 5'7 freshman. Cimarron down five with the ball, 24-19. Off the screen up top, Beery who has two threes. Now Copper, right block to Harrison who pulls it back out. Looking to drive in, bounce pass into Jansen, backing his way on Gooden, bank shot over top of Gooden and he hits it. He has four, 24-21. It's a 10-4 run here last three minutes for Cimarron as we approach Four minutes to go, first half. They have the last five points here. And they've had two strings of five. Here's an answer, in fact, three for Tony. Splashes on in. He has two threes and eight points. 27 21, 350 to go, first half. But a big three that doubles the score up for the Beavers here. They've hit five in the first half. Make that, yeah, five in the first half. Ball knocked out of bounds. Efren Trango returns the lineup, replacing Chase Thomas, who had a good four minutes. Nope, correction. Tone's going to check out. Harrison to inbound it for Cimarron here with 3.42 to go second quarter. They'll throw up in, kind of an awkward pass around, wrapped around the defender of Scott City in. Harrison now left corner guarded by Trango, dribbles behind the back, steps back, now he'll go again, he'll lay it up and can't get that one to go, but tipped around and Everett Trango gets the ball for Scott City. Beavers up by six with the ball, Bailey looking to drive right baseline and throws it away, gets it to Braxton Harrison, or to the Harrison's hands, ninth Scott City turnover. Kind of a no-win uh, situation there as Bailey was cut off on the right baseline, had nowhere to go, but Harrison steps in front of the passing lane as we approach three minutes to go first half. Six-point Scott City lead. Lob pass, trying to get it to Harrison. It's miscommunication and a six Blue Jay turnover. Hawkins in for Carter Gooden. 3.04 to go, first half, Scott City up by six. They cannot shake off this Cimarron Blue Jay group. 27-21, Beavers with the lead in the ball. Jace Thomas with it, now gets it to Efren Trango. Left go and he almost walks with it. Now Lawson Bailey left wing into Jackson Rumford. He'll drive in strong, puts one up and leaves it short. Rebound in the hands of Harrison between two Beavers. are gonna get a whistle and a foul on Efren Trango. Team foul number five on Scott City. Good flip up by Rumford there, just left it a little short. They're gonna get Trango for his second foul. And Tone, well, won't, will not check in for him yet. Here's, we're down to 2.45 to go first half. Scott City's owned the glass here in the first half, but Cimarron hanging in here down six. Scott City with the lead, 27-21, almost a walk up top. Here's Berry, now right wing to David Mendez. He'll pull it back out, uses up a dribble, finds it right side to Trace Copper. Copper, entry feed into Jansen, trying to go around Hawkins, back up top to Copper for a three. Off the back iron rebound, Jace Thomas for Scott City. A strong rebound there. In transition, here's Thomas left sideline, up top to Trango, 2.15 to go first half. Scott City up by six with the ball. Thomas, a floated foul line to Jackson Rumford. Now he'll take it in strong, jump stop, gets stripped going up and a turnover. Number 10 on the turnovers in the first half. Cimarron with five steals. With maybe keeping Cimarron in the game a little bit is the turnovers for Scott City with their 10. Entry feed right block to Luke Jansen. Faces up. Hawkins now backs away and flips up a bank shot, fade away, no. And the rebound backside to Lawson Bailey for Scott City, grabs his fifth board of the half. Minute 40 to go, second quarter, right side to Efren Trango looking to drive in. He gets stripped from behind and then, oh, he almost held there. 11th Scott City turnover. Samron has played scrappy defense, but Scott City not taking care of the basketball. Minute 28 to go, first half. We've been stuck for two minutes at 27-21, almost two and a half minutes. With it is Beery right wing. Cimarron's hit three triples this half. Scott City's hit four. 
Now make that five, jumps up. Shot blocked by Hawkins on the layup, a tip by Harrison. Here's Thomas back the other way. Scott City up by six with the ball. 69 seconds to go, first half. Trango drives the left baseline, loses the dribble, but somehow finds in the hands of Lawson Bailey, drives right baseline, right corner. Trango the three on the way, too strong in the hands of Braxton Harrison for the, for the defensive board. 54 seconds to go, second quarter in transition, going up and scoring at his beard. He has 10, 27, 23, 48 seconds to go first half. Scott City's lead down to four. They have not scored here in three minutes. 40 seconds to go, bounce pass. Right side to Efren Trango into Jackson Runford. Now to Gus Hawkins, cutting right side. Goes up, scores it, and is fouled. Hawkins with just his fourth point, 29-23. 33 seconds to go first half. And team foul number four on Cimarron. That's on Braxton Harrison, his second. That'll get him out of the game as he checks out. Also out will be David Mendez. In is Cade Moeller and Zachary Lopez, a 5'11 junior for the first time. Thomas checks out for Scott City. His free throw for Hawkins is good. He has five. 70% free throw shooter and Scott City back up by seven. 33 seconds to go first half at 30 to 23. Good first half offensively for the Beavers, but the turnovers have may have maybe have held him back here a little bit. Here's Copper up top, uses up his dribble, kind of stranded. Now gets it over right side to Beery. Backing his way is Jansen on Hawkins, catches a fadeaway, bank shot, no. Rebound, Rumford for Scott City. Good defense by Scott City, the block with 11 seconds. Here's Trango driving right side, stranded out high to Bailey. He'll try a triple. That one's well short, it goes out of bounds to Simron with 4.1 to go first half. Bailey has not scored in the second quarter after a 12 point performance in the first. 4.1 to go first half. Here's Simron racing across with Copper with one second. Oh, he gets fouled. That's right before the end of the first half. Are they going to call the foul on Tarango for his third? They're going to talk it over. There's no... F uh, they're keeping everybody there on the floor. The officials are discussing. I don't think it should be a shooting foul. I think it's just going to be a foul on the... Oh... They are going to call it a shooting foul. Oh my goodness. That looked to me before the shot. And that is, they're going to put seven tenths of a second on the clock. It, okay, they're not shooting foul. Okay, I did not think it was a shooting foul, but it's Efren Trango's third foul with seven tenths of a second to go first half. And. Simron's going to design a play with seven tenths of a second. They're going to call a timeout. That's with seven tenths of a second. That's got to be pretty tough to shoot a get a shot up in seven tenths of a second. Basketball brought to you tonight by DeKalb Bayer. Also, Shells, Flyers, and more Brookover Cattle Company, Burning Farms, Beef Belt, Beaver Town, FFL, Barley Grain, BH Paving, and America Implement. That is ends up being the right call. I was worried at first. That they were going to say that's going to be three free throws for Simron. I did not think he was shooting. That was good work officiating, putting time on the clock. That was appropriate. And a foul on the floor, they'll inbound it. Simron, it's interesting they call a timeout with just seven tenths of a second on the clock in the first half. It has to be, they, Simron brings Harrison back in the game with his two fouls. Jansen to inbound it near half court. They get it into Copper. He'll throw up the three. It's blocked by Tarango. That's a gutsy play by Tarango because he had three fouls and he stayed in the game. Copper three in the corner blocked and we have finally reached halftime. 30 to 23, your halftime score for Scott City over Cimarron. Back after this three minute break, this is Beaver Basketball. The chair on the Beavers. If you're in the market for a newer used vehicle, check out JR Auto Group with locations in Scott City, Oakley, and Colby. JR Auto Group has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles in Scott City and both Oakley locations. Locally owned and operated, JR Auto Group provide over 250 new and used vehicles in stock and ready to be delivered. Stop on in and check out JR Auto Group LLC.com for all your vehicle needs.
Health Chiropractic Wellness Centers of Southwest Kansas focuses on overall health for the entire body. Dr. James Yeager strives for the best possible health for his patients the natural way. Whether you're looking for back pain relief, through manual or computerized adjustments, or through therapy, to lose a few pounds, a healthier water alternative, or an aqua massage, come see Dr. Yeager and his trusted staff in Scott City or Garden City. To set up an appointment, call the offices or visit the website at ProHealthKS.com for more information. Scott City Eye Center has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations at our Scott City Optometry Office and specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and are committed to improving the quality of life of persons in the Scott City community through enhanced vision. Give yourself the gift of clear vision. Schedule an appointment with Joshua J. Gooden, OD, today. Every stage of life want a healthcare experience uniquely theirs, where excellence meets elegance and healthcare. About to three to nine points in the second quarter. They lead by seven at the break here. It's 30 to 23. Scott City leads Simron here at intermission. Is back here inside the Scott Community Events Center. Adam Kadavy with you here. And Scott City took a 17-11 lead. They went on a 13-2 run over the final 321 in the first quarter and ended up being 15 to two stretch there but Cimarron put together spurts of a 10-4 run and they pulled it in 24-21 and 27-23 and then the three-point play by Gus Hawkins played in the first half gave the Bever Beavers a seven-point edge here at 30 to 23 halftime scoring looks like this uh, for Cimarron they were led by Lane Beria two threes and a couple two-point baskets with his 10 points he was pretty good from the floor in the first half four of five Seven for Braxton Harrison, four for Luke Jansen, and two for Trace Copper in the first half. So that's their scoring for the uh, Blue Jays. They had four fouls, six turnovers, six steals, five defensive rebounds, five offensive boards for a total of uh, five rebounds. For Scott City in the first half, Lawson Bailey, who had 12 in a row in that first quarter for the Beavers, out of their first 14 points. He had 12 in the first half, eight for Austin Tony at a couple of threes, five for Gus Hawkins, three for Jace Thomas, and two for Carter Gooden. That's the scoring for the Beavers in the first half. Scott City hurt themselves with plenty of turnovers. They had 10 turnovers, five fouls, three steals. Make the correction, they had six fouls in the first half. 10 defensive rebounds, six offensive boards for a total of 16 rebounds. Scott City up by seven at the break, 30 to 23. Back after this timeout, we'll take about a two minute break. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Women at every stage of life want a healthcare experience uniquely theirs, where excellence meets elegance and healthcare is personalized just for you. Scott County Hospital and Scott City Clinic's skilled physicians and nurses will help your family prepare for the birth of your baby. The private, comfortable, secure rooms for labor, delivery, and postpartum care include jacuzzi tubs for pain management during labor. Call Scott City Clinic to set an appointment today. We put our heart in health care. Scott County Hospital is a highly trained team of motivated and compassionate professionals serving the needs of their community. Dr. Matthew Burns is a general surgeon whose specialty is caring for all patients with elective and emergency surgeries. Why travel for hours when you can be seen right here in Western Kansas? Dr. Burns is specially trained in colonoscopy, gallbladder, and laparoscopic surgeries, hernia repair, wound care, and much more. Scott County Hospital, we put our heart in healthcare.
exceptional service in real estate puts Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Shapland Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Shapland Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Shapland Real Estate a call or visit our website today. Go with the proven winner. I'm Michael Trout from State Farm in Scott City. When it comes to auto insurance, we score big. The Scott Community Event Center here halftime at 30 to 23 for Scott City over Cimarron as we take a look at some other first half stats for you. Uh, the Blue Jays shot nine of 20 in the first half. Both teams shot the ball above their season average. Cimarron a 32% team from the field coming into tonight, but for nine of 20 for 45%. They were three of seven on threes, but they were six of 13 on two point baskets and perfect two for two from the line. For Scott City, they were right at 50% at 12 of 24. Five of nine on threes. And a seven of 15 on twos and one of two from the free throw line. Those are both on three point plays, so it just was two different trips there were one of two. Uh, but foul trouble for Scott City, Efren Trango, he picked right at the end of the first half there, seven tenths of a second, he picked up his third foul. He stayed in there and almost, when he blocked the shot of Trace Copper in the left corner for a three at the end of the half in that seven tenths, he almost committed his fourth foul there. He was close, but it was a clean block. Cimarron had Braxton Harrison with two of their four fouls. Scott City would be on the road twice next week. At uh, top five team in Class 5A Hayes on Tuesday, and then at Ulysses in league play on Friday. Cimarron will host Sublette and Lakin next uh, Tuesday and Friday. Sublette beat Cimarron in double overtime in the Blue Jay Classic earlier this year, 62-58. But Cimarron's played a lot better since uh, early mid-December when Scott City played him last, and you know, that's a lot of adjustments with a new coach and Chris Chilton learning his system, and and they've showed it here in this first half. They're playing a lot better. Uh, then they hit a Bergen Lakin team next Friday night. See if Scott City can get above 500. Winner, winner tonight will be on a three game winning streak into the final month of the regular season. Of course, uh, both these teams in different sub states. Scott City will be in the Goodland sub state. The Blue Jays will be in the Kingman sub state. They kind of split the league in half this year of the three A schools Cimarron, Holcomb, and you get in in that sub-state at Cayman. Scott City, Colby Goodland in the Goodland sub-state. Cimarron's ball to begin the third quarter. The Beavers are all out. Lawson, Bailey, Efren, Trango with his three fouls. Also, uh, Austin Tone, Carter Gooden, and Gus Hawkins. Cimarron with Trace Copper. Also, Lane Beery, Braxton Harrison, David Mendez, and Luke Jansen. Harrison with it, steps back. Couple dribbles now up top to Copper. Scott City in a 3 2 zone to begin this half, up seven. Played by as many as nine. They trailed early in the first quarter at 9 4 before they went on a 13 2 run in the first quarter. Foul in the right corner on Scott City. That'll be charged to Gus Hawkins for his second foul. 21 seconds into the third quarter. Copper to inbound, it does so up top to Braxton Harrison. Harrison guarded by Trango. Scott City leaves his own now. Trango hits the deck and forces the steal, but then ripped right back out by Harrison. No tie up there. And now right side, it goes to Barry, guarded by Gooden now on the rotation on the defense. Scott City is gonna actually switch it up to man. It looks like off the screen here is Mendez driving right side, fade away is in and out, rebound, ripped away by Harrison, goes up, misses it, but tipped out high and Cimarron with another crack at it. And now Harrison goes by a couple, he'll lay it up and get it to go and one. 30 to 25 with 7.04 to go third quarter. Too many opportunities for the Blue Jays there. And the foul on Scott City, their second of the half. The second on Austin Tone. Gave him way too many opportunities there and the Harrison will make him pay with the three point play. He has now 10 and it's a four point game. First minute of the second half, 30 to 26. And now Efren Trango bounce pass to Austin Tone. He'll drive left baseline, take it all the way, dish it right corner to Lawson Bailey, turns down the three, pulls up mid range right side. No, but rebound Gus Hawkins backside follow up, yes. Hawkins with seven, and it's 32-26 with 6.45 to go third quarter, and a good answer back for Scott City on Hawkins is just second board of the night. 
Now here's Harrison. He'll just take it strong. His first slam blocked out of there by Carter Gooden. And it's still going to be Cimarron basketball. 6.35 to go third quarter. That time Harrison thought he was going to get the reverse layup, but Gooden says not and around me, buddy. Now off the inbounds, there's a three, a short rebound, Lawson Bailey. It was put up by Lane Beery. Here's Lawson Bailey on the run for Scott City. Now left side to Efren Trangle. He'll drive left baseline. Dish it right corner to Tone. He'll try a three. He'll be good on the three. His third three, he has 11. 35-26, Scott City just like that with a 5-0 run. Matching their largest lead of the night at nine. 6-10 to go third quarter. Scott City's sixth triple of the night as well. Lane Beery with it up top, guarded by Gus Hawkins off the screen to Mendez. Mendez steps back. Off the screen now, right corner to Copper. Scott City playing good man-to-man -man defense. Copper drive in, now dish it to nobody to the Cimarron bench in the seventh Blue Jay turnover. 5.57 to work third quarter. No question that Harrison and even Jansen to an extent draw a lot of attention but Scott City's really done a pretty decent job on him tonight. They've let him loose a few times. Here's Tone driving in. He'll jump, reverse his lip. Tough shot, no, but good right there for the tip in. He has four off the putback, and it's the largest lead, 37-26, 537 to go third quarter. For Tone's missed layup that time. Tone tried to get his 13th point. Left wing goes to David Mendez. Mendez looking to drive in, guarded by Tone. He uses it up off the screen. Here's a three on the way. Too strong, and that's tipped out. Oh, they're going to say last touch. Okay, they are going to say last touch by Cimarron. It'll be Scott City basketball. With 5.21 to go, the Beavers trying to add to their 7-0 run and try to distance themselves a little bit more. It's 37-26. Scott City with an 11-point lead in the ball. 5.13 to go. Tone flips behind him to Efren Tranga. Almost turned the ball over. Now to Austin Tone, who had to reel it in. Back up top at, between the rings to Bailey. Left side, it goes over to Trango. Throws it over right side. Tone turns down the three. Cimarron in his zone here with 4.58 to work third quarter. A 37-26 Scott City lob into Hawkins. Catches it, and then he loses it out of bounds. 11th Beaver turnover. He was going down there and kind of slipped right out of his hands as he's getting ready to go up. 11th Scott City turnover. 4.50 to go third quarter at 37-26 Scott City on a 7-0 run. Working around left wing to the Blue Jays, David Mendez. Weathers and Thomas to check in, next dead ball. Right side over to Trace Copper, right corner now to Lane Beery. Beery will dribble it in just right at the right elbow. Now a screen right wing for Mendez. Mendez looking to feed it in, entry feed into Jackson, backs his way in, pump fake gets Gooden up in the air. It'll be a push and two free throws. Gooden's first foul, team's third, with 4.25 to go for third quarter. So Jansen to the line to shoot two. He's 42% there on the year. Cimarron three of three at the line tonight. Scott sitting one of two. But no fouls for Cimarron this half, and Jansen hits nothing but the net, and you're down at that end where the Scott City student section is. You're going to hear about it. Thomas and Weathers enter in. Out will be Efren Trango as well as Carter Gooden. Jansen's second free throw. He's going to get that to bounce in. Soft bounce for his fifth point. 37 27, 425 to go, third quarter. That's the ends the 7 0 Scott City run. Nearly three minute drought. Tone drives left corner. Now pulls it back out. Wraparound pass up top to Thomas. He'll drive to the foul line. Right wing to Bailey. Ball fake drives in. Right corner to Ronnie Weathers. Out high to Austin Tone. Midway point, third quarter. Tone trying to penetrate spin, move the whistle. They're going to call a charge for a push-off. Tone's third, team's fourth already this half. Cimarron yet to commit a foul with the 4.03 mark of the third quarter, so a little foul trouble for the Scott City guards. Trango is going to check back in. Tone with three fouls. That could be an interesting factor here with 3.50 to go third quarter. Right now, the Beavers with a 10-point lead. Entropy deflected. We're going to get a... A foul of Weathers, his first, and already the 15th foul on Cimarron with two, 3.48 to go third quarter as he tried to go around Jansen. Jansen had good position at the right block. Weathers once again with his first foul. Trango in for Tone. No fouls yet on Cimarron this half, but Scott City getting out of position a little bit. Getting called for this foul. Oh, almost a walk there. Time Barry had one dribble. Now left side. Here's Copper trying to drive in. He'll step back. 
Guarded by Bailey, he drives the foul line, jumps up, scoop shot, left side too strong, tipped out high, it's a race for it, and Trango will get it, he'll slow it down, now he'll drive in strong, he'll lay it up and draw the foul and get two free throws. Nice strong move by Trango. He'll draw the first foul on the Blue Jays this half. 3.32 to go third quarter. First foul on David Mendez. Two free throws for Tarango. 44% on the air at the line. Hits the first one. 38-27. 3.32 to go third quarter. In is going to be Cade Muller replacing David Mendez who committed the foul. Scott City matching their largest lead. And it's still that way. Rebound Gus Hawkins. Hook shot up. Good. It's a three-point trip. Scott City wants time, and Scott City now has their largest lead at 40 to 27. Timeout on the floor, 3.29 to go third quarter. We'll be back in a minute. This is Beaver Basketball. Go with the proven winner. I'm Michael Trout from State Farm in Scott City. When it comes to auto insurance, we score big with our policyholders. We score on competitive rates, on customer service, and on satisfaction and speedy claim handling. Let us quote your autos today and make you a part of the Trout State Farm team. Call or stop by Michael Trout State Farm and you can be assured of our personal best. Go with the winner, Michael Trout State Farm, Scott City. Basketball tonight brought to you by DeKalb Bears, Shells Flower, Moore, Brookover Cattle Company, Burning Farms, Beef Belt, Beavertown, FFL, Bartlett Grain, b &H Paving, and American Implements. Adam Kadevi with you here from the Scott Community Event Center. It's 40-27, Scott City with their largest lead of the night. They're on a 10-1 run over the last four minutes, or three minutes, 3.29 to go third quarter. That basket for Hawkins, his ninth point of the night. He's probably got the quietest nine points I've seen from him all year. It's Blue Jay basketball out of that Scott City timeout. Both teams with three timeouts remaining. Up top with it is Braxton Harrison for a deep three. Crawls off, rebound, tip in the hands of Lawson Bailey. Bailey's had quite a night rebounding. That's his seventh board unofficially. And now just across is Bailey half court to Jace Thomas. He needed help there, but finally got it. Now Thomas will drive in. He'll penetrate. He'll take one up on the way. We'll miss it, but he will get fouled and get two free throws. Second team foul on the Blue Jays this half with 2.59 to go third quarter. They'll get Cade Muller with his second foul. Thomas to the line where he's 1-2 in the varsity this year. Has three points tonight. 6-1 Junior's free throw is good. Knocks it down. Scott City expands on their 11-1 run over the last nearly four minutes. 41-27, 2.59 to go third quarter. Second charity toss. Perfect. Five off the bench for the junior. 42-27. And in will be David Mendez replacing Lane Beery. 42-27, a 15-point edge for the Beavers. Trying to get to seven and six on the year. In the first three-game win streak in a couple of years. Ball deflected, good defense by Thomas Side High. Forces Simmer on their eighth turnover. Bailey takes it right to left. Right corner effort from Trango. Entry feed to Hawkins. Looking to back his way in for double figures. Bank shot, he's got it. Six in the period, 11 for the game. 44-27, 238 to go third quarter. Scott said he did it with the three ball in the first half. They're doing it, pounding it in the paint in the second half. Harrison with a deep three, bounces off rebound. Jace Thomas for Scott City. Now down the floor to Efren Trango. Scott City wants to run with it up 17. Bailey turns down the three, drives in, flips one up over. Jansen, yes, he has 14. 46-27 with 2.17 to go. Third stanza. Scott City now builds up a 19-point lead and a whistle, timeout, Cimarron. It's a full... We'll take it as well with 2.10 to go third quarter. 46-27, Scott City. Back in a minute, this is Beaver Basketball.
Turner Sheet Metal, our main goal is to enhance the comfort of your home while making sure that our customers are 100% satisfied. Need your furnace checked for the winter? Call us. Need your air conditioner clean for the summer? Our Nate certified technicians are the guys for the job. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant authorized dealer in Scott City, can also help you save up to 40% on your heating and cooling costs with a Bryant Evolution system. Call for a free estimate and let us help keep your family comfortable and safe. Turner Sheet Metal, South Highway 83 in Scott City. Our equal opportunity providers. Scott City has been on a 16 to one run over the last four and a half minutes of this game and they have opened up a 19 point cushion. It's now 46, 27, 210 to go third quarter. Blue Jays with the ball out of the, their full timeout. And uh, it's down to two minutes to go here third quarter. Right side at the wing to David Mendez. Mendez the driven around the perimeter to the top off the screen right side to Cade Moeller. Moeller with it. He'll drive to the right elbow, loses dribble, picks it back up. Now up top to Harrison. He's launched a couple of threes. Now he'll drive in it. Got it stripped, but picked it back up. Copper with it. Minute 48 to go third quarter. Copper drives right side. Shot blocked by Bailey. The right into the hands of Jansen. We've got a whistle and a holding foul. That'll be the 16th foul on Simron this half. As Jackson Rumford and Alex Rodriguez, Rodriguez in for the first time. Thomas picks up the foul. His first team six, Cimarron just two fouls this half. 144 here in the third at 46-27 for Scott City. Cimarron had pulled within four in the first minute on a three point play by Harrison. Since then it's been a 16-1 Scott City run, three in and out. We put up by Copper, here's Thomas. He's had a nice night. In transition, Weathers drives in, flips one up for Point Blake, might have been blocked, but right to Rodriguez, he flipped out of his hands going up, and it's gonna be Cimarron basketball out of all that. Down to 1.14 to go third quarter. Weathers still scoreless here tonight, first game in two weeks. Good to see him and Rodriguez both back out on the court. Avery Nolan, Dylan Duff to check in next dead ball for Scott City. Copper, he looks to drive in. Spin move, 55 seconds to go third quarter. Scott City's played nearly everybody then tonight if, when these next two check in. Up by 19. Screen here for Copper, goes left side. Underneath, bounce pass, knocked out by Rodriguez with 46.2 to go third quarter. So Dylan Duff and Avery Knoll to check in for the Beavers. Jace Thomas and Lawson Bailey check out. The guard play has been really good tonight for Scott City. And and really, as well as they play, that's how Scott City plays. Going up, tough shot, too strong. Scott City contested it well underneath there for Jansen and Jackson Rumford. Rips away his second board of the night. Avery Knoll run the point, goes left to Dylan Duff. Into Ronnie Weathers, catches it. Pump fakes, goes up with the paint shot, blocked it. Avery Knoll the rebound, rips it away. We're going to get a tie up. It'll be Scott City ball on the possession arrow with 30.3 to go third quarter. The Beavers up 19 at 46 to 27. No look in the inbound. Oh, miscommunication. The Jansen's try, or he does end up knocking it off of Rumford. Scott City's 13th turnover of the night. They have just three turnovers in this third quarter. That second quarter, they kept Simran in the game with those six turnovers in that period. Blue Jay Bowl, 25 seconds to go third period. Up top to Luke Jansen. Now goes left side of the pass to Mendez. Mendez off the screen up top. To Lane Beery driving his way in, backs his way. Harrison from 17, knocks it down. He has his 12th point. He has five of their six points in the quarter. 46, 29, eight seconds to go in the third quarter. Duff will race it across, right to left, will drive in. Now left corner, Rumford will try a three. He'll be short on it, and that's the end of your third quarter. Scott City in the third quarter goes on a 17 to eight run, or six run, and they build up a 46 to 29 lead, make that a 16, six run. So we go to the fourth quarter, up 17. Back in a minute, Beaver basketball here tonight. It takes more than just the seed to raise a good crop. It takes the effort of a great team. It takes the same teamwork and dedication to be successful on the football field. Two receivers said it would be an option play. It'll be handoff to the fullback, Golden. He finds nothing. Vogelmore Family Farms is proud to be part of Scott Community, where together we raise our most important crop of all, our kids. 
Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with a knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at WSBKS.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC, and as always, go Beaver! Your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Fourth quarter set to begin. It'll be Cimarron basketball as they trail the Beavers 46 29. Scott City with their starting five back out with Everett Tarango, Lawson, Bailey, Austin, Tone, uh, Carter Gooden, and Gus Hawk. And Cimarron with Trace Copper, also David Mendez, Braxton Harrison, Alec Whitman. And here's a three up top by Copper. He knocks that one down. It's 10 3. And Cimarron has scored the last five of the ball game, 46-32, 7.40 to go here in this contest. Now Tone with the hill race right down Broadway, gets stripped from behind, out of bounds to Scott City. They'll inbound it with 7.33 left. Beavers up by 14, 46-32. A little 5-0 Cimarron run to pull to within 14. Lob into Hawkins, catches it, goes up, and too strong, can't get his rebound, and... Tracked down by Trace Copper. So 46-32, Hawkins trying to go for his 13th point. Lawson Bailey has 14 and three and double figures for Beavers. Scott City gets a steal underneath. Ninth Blue Jay turnover. So Scott City has Bailey with 14. 11 each for Hawkins and Tone. Now into Hawkins. Backs his way in on Harrison and gets it around him for his 13th point. 48-32, 7 0 4 to go. Scott City back up by 16 and ends the brief 5-0 Blue Jay run. That 5-0 run eclipsed a couple of 4-0 runs by Cimarron in the game tonight and then stolen away is that time Barry brought the ball a little bit too high and around his shoulder and Scott City just stripped it out. Back-to-back Cimarron turnovers. Tone with it up top to Carter Gooden. Left side to Efren Trango entry feed into Gus Hawkins. Double teamed up top Bailey looking for his 17th point. That crawls off, rebound underneath to Braxton Harrison for Cimron. He's been limited on rebounds tonight. That's just his fourth unofficially. And now he fires a deep three and buries it. He has 15 and a couple threes. 48-35, 6.21 to go. All of a sudden, Cimron has pulled this to within 13. Now Lawson Bailey pulls up, up top to Triangle to work it out high right to Austin Tone. I think it's... Coach Brian Gentry, you just want your team to work some offense. Got to remember what happened last week against Smoky Valley with a 13-point lead in laps. Now in a Gus Hawkins, good cut, goes up from Point Blake. Oh, he missed it, tipped, and Harrison grabs the board. Oh, he missed the bunny from right underneath it, Hawkins. 5.50 to go, and Cimarron down 13 with the ball. 48-35. They trailed by as many as 19 this half, and they have... Been on a little 6-2 run underneath. Throwing of prayer up, no, is Whitman. Hawkins had the rebound and a foul. Be a foul on Cimron with 5.39 to go. Their third foul of the half. Be the third foul on Braxton Harrison, who has 15 points and five boards in officially with 5.39 to go. 48-35, Cimron playing some man to man full court pressure. Scott City will attack it, taking it across. Now bounce pass left baseline to Carter Gooden. One dribble out high left to t- Trango now to Tone. Working high right to Lawson Bailey off the screen up top to Carter Gooden. Man-to-man defense for the Blue Jays. Tone off the screen to Efren Trango straight away. Right wing to Carter Gooden trying to get it into Hawkins. Now stopped up top to Bailey with 5.15 to work. Scott City with a 48-35 lead. Bailey drives in right corner to Tone. Steps back, fires the three. Go, and he's fouled. They did not hear the whistle. And Tone gets a quick shot of water from the bench after the three-point attempt. As a foul, the whistle was very faint. I could hear it, but the rest of the most of the players could not. That's going to be on Alec Whitman, his second, team's fourth. Chris Chilton wondering what was the deal on that. Austin Tone will have three charity shots coming up to add to his 11th. 11 points tonight here with 5.04 remaining. Scott City with a 48-35 advantage. Uh, got an official timeout here. Okay, so they have an official timeout. 
don't know what the officials are discussing here. They make sure to finalizing it was a three shot foul and they say yes. And so we resume. 5.04 left. Tone's first free throw of three. Shorty 71% coming in now, 67% at 12 of 18. He'll get two more. Even though he missed the three, any free throws he hits are bonus points. Second free throw good. Scott City now five of eight from the line and they have a 49-35 lead with 5.04 to go. That allows Luke Jansen to check in for Alec Whitman. Jansen has five points tonight. Zimmer on four of five from the line. And the free throw for Tone rims around and drops home. He has 13, a Baker's dozen to make it 50 to 35. He has two out of three, he has 13. Five minutes to go, 15 point Scott City lead. Cimarron's ball, Lane Berry, right corner. Here's a three on the way. Yeah, it rattles out for Mendez, who's just took his 10th three pointer of the year, and Scott City grabs the board. Hawkins grabbed his fifth board there. Tone with it with 442 left, drives left side, uses, or almost uses up the dribble, flips it out high left to Tarango. Now to Lawson Bailey up top. Bailey got Scott City's scoring going well. Now Bailey will lob it into Hawkins. Catches it, mismatch, and he's got point number 15. 52-35 with 4.26 to go. Good job by Scott City. And going back and forth of the ebbs and flows of the game, pushing their lead back up to 17 when Cimarron was trying to creep back to within 13. High, or jump stop, and now left corner to Trace Copper. He'll drive in and flip one up short, but right into the hands of Carter Good for his fifth board. And then stolen away by Simmer on the backcourt. J or layup good for Harrison and one. He has 17, and he'll look to make it 18 off Scott City's 14th turnover, 52-37 to with 4.04 to go. They're going to get Carter Gooden second foul, seventh team foul in the Beavers this half. Harrison at the line, converts the three-point play. He has 18 and makes it a 14-point game with 4.04 to go. 52-38. Scott City just unable to put Simran away for good here. As Trango to inbound it in to Lawson Bailey. Clear out and jump stop needs help. Finds Efren Trango. He needs to get it across to avoid the 10 count. And he just does. And the stop's out high now to Lawson Bailey. 350 to go, 52-38. Now Lobb trying to get into Hawkins, but it's he's fronted by Harrison who forces the turnover. Simran can inch a little closer here with 340 to go. 52-38, bounce pass right side. Checking in is Miguel Ramirez for the first time, a 5'7 freshman. Now to David Mendez who pulls it back out. Lob in left side to Copper, underneath of the paint up top. Mendez, ball fake, drives right side. Now right baseline stopped. To Braxton Harrison looking for a screen. He'll drive right side, he'll take it all the way. Laid up short, rebound Carter Gooden. Left it short on the right side of the rim and Gooden with the board. Scott City down the floor to Gus Hawkins. Drives in, pump fakes, goes up, and one. He's got 17, 54-38 with 3.09 to go. Team foul number five on the Blue Jays this half. The first charge to Luke Jansen. Carter Gooden, Efren Trango check out. Ronnie Weathers back in. Same with uh, Jace Thomas. Hawkins with 17, leaves it short. Rebound into the hands of Miguel Ramirez, who once again is in there. 3.05 to go. 15 points, Scott City lead. Now Harrison pulls up, leaves that. Oh, it dropped in it. He has now 20. 54-38, 2.58 to go. Make the 54-40. Back down to a 14-point game bounce pass. Here's Lawson Bailey driving in on Jansen. Pulls up over the top of him and it crawls off. Rebound, who wants it? Cimarron rips it away. A couple of Beavers had it underneath there, but they miss it, or miss fire on collecting it. Now a stop and pop three, crawls off. Rebound, Hawkins is mugged from behind by Miguel Ramirez in the face. Hawkins grabs his sixth rebound of the night. Coach Brian Gentry wants time after that foul. Three by Copper, the rebound by Scott City. Timeout for Scott City, it's a 30 second timeout with 237 left. Beavers up by 14 at 54-40, not able to put Cimarron away here tonight. But this has been an approved Blue Jay team here after the Christmas break. And, and all three of their wins have come after the Christmas break against Ulysses, against Lacrosse, and Victoria recently. Scott City has won four games in the month of January. 
They're four and two this month. Opportunity for momentum heading in to Hayes on Tuesday. That's gonna be a big task against a very good Indian team. Hayes High, they took the number one ranked team at the time, Lawrence Free State to overtime and had it almost won it against the Firebirds in that Hayes City shootout, lost in overtime. That's their only loss of the year. That's gonna be a pretty tough matchup, but Scott City's up to the task there here in a few days on Tuesday, the 1st of February. Cimarron to apply some full court pressure on the timeout. Both teams down to two timeouts remaining here with 2.35 to go. Thomas with it, now to Lawson Bailey. Scott City up 54-40. Hawkins at the half court stripe. Now bolt pass, Ronnie Weathers. Oh, he jumped stop, but he traveled before going up. The hop step, uh, Scott City a turnover. Their 16th of the night, and Cimarron enters in. Luke Jansen in to replace Miguel Ramirez. That time, I think Weathers got a little too excited there. Wanted to get his first buck of the night. I know he wants to get that lid off the rim. He's been quiet the last two games he's played. And now Copper looking at three. Now it'll be Harrison who launched a three. No, rebound. Hawkins, will, oh, he throws it away after he got the rebound and the turnover. Now loose, picked up by Scott City. To the team's trade turnovers. Scott City, way too many turnovers tonight. 17 for them, two minutes to go. Right at their season average. Bailey right baseline, Weathers, he'll take the deep two. Ah, oh, too strong, rebound to Tone. And now backdoor cut, here's Jace Thomas, he'll go up and he's fouled. Harrison with his fourth foul with a minute 52 left. Thomas has had himself a pretty good game tonight. Scott City has owned the glass for the most part tonight. Thomas's free throw is good. 55-40, 1.52 to go. Scott City, 50 points per game on average. They're a little bit north of that right now. One free throw here to try to make it 56, and Thomas 4-4 four, four from the line. 56-40, buck 52 to go. It'll be a good win for the first game in a week for Scott City. I know it's against a 3-9 Cimarron team, but they're improving. They've, they've made a lot of strides since the first time these two teams met up. Backing his way in Jansen. He'll flip one up over Hawkins. He finally gets one to go over Hawkins for 7.50, 6.42, 138 to go. Not that Scott City hasn't improved. They've improved tremendously. They're starting to believe in themselves a little bit more. And really, it all starts with the guard play. They're, they've been more aggressive. And that has led to more success for Scott City. Thomas, bounce pass into Weathers, goes around one, reverses a layup, and he's on the board. 58-42 with 1.16 to go. Finally got that too. He's been itching and itching for that. Minute 10 to go into Jackson. Backs his way in on Jackson Rumford, and Rumford goes up, but he's called for the foul. Team foul number eight on Scott City this half, and Jansen line for two free throws where he's one of two tonight. Cimarron is five of six from the line. Four, five, four. And now five of seven. Scott City, 8 of 12, 107 to go. Out will be Lane Beery in as David Mendez. Second free throw for Jansen, seven points for the senior. Oh, that one rimmed in and out, and Ronnie Weathers grabbed the board for Scott City. Final minute of this one, so he gets it over right to Lawson. Bailey takes it in the front court, now stops. And uh, Ronnie Weathers behind the defense, he'll reverse his layup and bank it home for his fourth point in a row. And Scott City hits a 60-point mark for the first time in three weeks. 60-42, 48 seconds to go. Stop and go, nice strong move, layup, no. Hit the deck, Bailey will race it back the other way. And he gets it poked away from Braxton Harrison from behind. And three to check in for the Beavers here with 39.8 to go. Duff also, Avery Knoll. And Alex Rodriguez. Sixty to forty-two, inbounded in will be Rodriguez. He finds Nolan to Weathers, trying to get his sixth straight point. No rebound, last touch. I think that went off the leg of Alex Rodriguez, and it did, and it'll belong to Simron. Sixty to forty-two, thirty-three point eight to go in this one. With Scott City matching punch for punch in this fourth quarter, when Simron was trying to get it back to a single possession game. Cimarron will let it trickle across half court and then pick it up. Right wing extended to Miguel Ramirez is in there for the Blue Jays. Bounce pass to Mendez, guarded by Alex Rodriguez. 25 seconds to go. 
That was stripped out of there by Duff almost and still loose, but picked up by Copper. He'll step back and fire a deep three. Too strong right in the hands of Avery Nolan for the board. Scott said he's owned the glass tonight. 12 seconds. Duff will split the defenders, but he gets fouled, and he'll have his chance for his first varsity free throws. He hit a three for his first varsity points against Cimarron many games ago. Eight games ago, I guess you could say. The first foul on Trace Copper, eighth team foul on the Blue Jays this half. And they'll bring in Samuel Allen in for the first time, a 5'10 junior. Also in for the Blue Jays. Duff's one and one is good, he'll get the bonus. 61-42, 10.8 left. Also in for the first time is Trent Briggs, a 5'8 freshman. And Duff sinks them both. It's a 20 point game, the largest lead of the night. 10 seconds left in this one. We'll have a split in the doubleheader tonight. Six seconds, five seconds. Backdoor feed deflected, but picked up though by Gail Cardiel. Puts it up, rebound, Noel. And that is all she wrote. Scott City pulls away in the second half for a 62 42 victory over the Cimarron Blue Jays to get to 7 and 6 on the year. And they are 1 0 in the league. Cimarron drops to 0 2 in league play and 3 and 10 overall. We'll begin our post game after this three minute break. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. Food Liner is located at 1314 South Main Street in Scott City, Kansas. They are open daily from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Home delivery is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. just by calling 620-872-5854. They are a full-service grocery store offering a wide selection of varieties at affordable prices. Sign up today for their mobile app. Look for it in the App Play Store under White's 